All right, hello, Internet. Welcome to a game that was going to start 15 minutes ago, but it didn't, and that's okay. Uh, so if you're new here to the channel or anywhere else on the Internet, this is Nerd Immersion. We're going to be playing Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk. This is the cool collector's edition cover. It's shiny and green. Um, for those of you familiar with Lost Minds of Fandelver, that's essentially the first five chapters of this book. And then it takes a little bit of a turn, which will be the continuation of that. I have a, assembled a lovely cast for, uh, for us to play with tonight. And we'll get through some logistics and how this game might be different in some ways. Uh, but first, I guess we'll go down the line on the overlay here, and we'll introduce everybody, give us that little spiel about who you are, and then who you'll be playing. So, Robert, you're up first. Hello, everyone. I'm Captain Robert. I play D&D on the internet. Shocker. You can find <laughs> me at Captain Robert at everything. I happen to enjoy drinking copious amounts of Voodoo Ranger and other craft beers and playing D&D with my friends. I am representing the seven live streamed version of my family of barleys that are set wonderfully on the sword coast this time playing bronson barley the lion of leyland so it's going to be my first blonde dwarf i'm pumped oh. about this very very headstrong gryffindor life cleric hopefully doesn't die in the first two episodes See. he's not he's not a level one character in his heart this is a legend of Leyland, okay so i'm excited to bring one more barley back to life yeah party's gonna be at level one so uh robert might die tonight who knows um to the point from before but i also feel like this is that fun thing you always see the memes about where people come up with the crazy backstory for their characters and they're like i've slayed dragons and i've done all this but you're still just level one which I like. I think this will be a good good exercise. So next I up... I can still step on a pitchfork wrong. Yeah, right, very exactly. Easily. LB, why don't you go ahead and introduce us to you and your character, and we hope that OBS keeps going. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm LB Hackamup. You can find me at Hack Recklessly on YouTube and Twitch. Um, I'm going to be playing Soot. She is a changeling druid, level one. Uh, she's uh, just a sweet bean. Uh, she's wise, but not very uh, good at connecting dots. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, she just really likes rocks and fire. <laughs> That's pretty much just her personality. Uh -huh. All right. This is me. Uh, yeah. I like rocks. <laughs> uh, fair. Uh, Jonathan, why don't you go ahead and give us an intro to who you are and what you're, who you're playing. Uh, hola, buenas tardes. My name is Jonathan Perez. You might know me as Latinos against spooky shit everywhere. Helping you avoid lots of spookies and also rolling dice, creating characters, and having fun in the TTRPG space here as well. Uh, I will be playing Seneth Espalion Xander Yerkmeister. It's um, a mouthful. A level one uh, Phoenix Flame Sorcerer who <clears throat> is a little naive in the ways of the world and how it actually works just due to a, a sheltered upbringing and childhood friend of Soot. His... his little little compatriot um so i'm super excited super squishy it's been a hot minute since we've done level one so i mean honestly i might sneeze and then try to do the thing where i like cover my nose and then blow my back out and die i don't know <laughs> yeah uh i mean entirely possible at level one uh jake i realized i could literally just fall off the barn like this is real life <laughs> like i could fall <laughs> off and die yeah, 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 you could <laughs> die from falling damage, yeah. I'm going to slip in the bathtub in D&D. &D. This is going to... Uh, Jake, why don't you round us out here? Tell us about you, and I mean, some of you may recognize Jake from, from years and years ago on the channel, but... Yes, back in the day when we used to uh, pretty consistently stream. Um, I'm Jake, you know, uh, I've been playing with Ted forever now, so I was very excited when he gave me this opportunity to come in and play with everybody. You know, uh, it's fun and exciting to play online um and a good chance to you know just get together with some friends and roll some dice so i'm excited about that i will be playing bishop frisian he is a uh paladin uh, uh the red knight and uh he's here investigating whatever's gone wrong wherever we're going 
All right. So to give you guys a little bit of a breakdown, obviously, well, you know what? I thought this might be a fun thing since we've been talking about it. Why don't we just go down and just, I'll ask everybody what your HP is, just so everybody on the internet knows. So Robert, what's what's Bronson's HP sitting at here at level one? <laughs> 11. 11, okay. And uh, LB, what's Soots? 10. 10, all right. Jonathan, say this. <clears throat> I'm at a hot eight with a <laughs> Ooh, and lastly, Jake with Bishop. I am nearly doubling Seneth at uh, thirteen. Oh, so wow, we're we're feeling healthy. So like, yeah, so a good roll on a ten foot fall or twenty foot fall could take out most of you, if not all of you, if there's any damage done ahead of this. All right. <clears throat> so that being said, there are some homebrew rules where importing or that I have in my games that for those of you who have never watched these games before and some that we're changing and altering uh, just over the course of this that you should all be aware of. So on the base, and this will also be a reminder for the players if they didn't go ahead and do this. Everybody started with a feat at first level. So if you see that or, you know, end up looking at character sheets at a point down the road and are curious about why that's there, that's the thing. You also might see people using different abilities that you might be confused about since we're starting at level one. I do potions as a bonus action. It's a pretty commonplace rule that most people do, but we're adding a little bit uh, of difference to that. So if you drink it as a bonus action, you can administer it to somebody else as an action, but if you drink it yourself as an action, it heals the maximum amount, whereas the bonus action you roll. So if you really wanna just be chugging potions on your turn, you can roll for bonus action, get the full amount for the action. We're going to try a couple other unique things. One, we're going to do attunement rules for magic items are tied to your proficiency bonus. So everybody's starting with a maximum of two attuned magic items once they find them. But as they level up, it could go to three. It could go past three, you know, as this game is set to go to around level 12 or so. Uh, what else? Oh, we're using the one D&D rules for healing because healing... Let's be honest, it kind of sucks in 5e. Uh, it's really better to use when people are at zero hit points than preemptively. So we're gonna take the one D&D update where Cure Wounds and Healing Word, it's 2d8 and 2d4 respectively, and then each upcast adds two to that. So a second level Cure Wounds would be 4d8 healing, a second level Healing Word would be 4d4, and so on. <clears throat> I hope that makes sense. Um, I'm trying to remember, did I forget any other homebrew rules that I told you guys we were going to do? Hmm. Not that I'm remembering here. I should say nothing party specific. Okay. All right. Uh, you know what? Actually, this is something I, I'll spring this on you guys now. Uh, one of the things, I mean, it may be a little, maybe not so much for level one because the possibility of you going down and popping back up is pretty commonplace. But um, there's this concept people call the yo-yo, right? Where people, you go down to zero and you back up and you're back down and you're back up. Uh, I was wondering about possibly importing something that they use over in the world of Baldur's Gate 3 that when you go down and you come back up via healing or something, you lose your action. You still have your movement and your bonus action, but you lose your action as an offset. Now, if you were to roll a natural 20 and get popped back up by yourself, you would obviously have your full access to everything. But I figured I'd throw that out there. I don't know how people feel about it, but I'll pull the group right now. Thoughts? I like exhaustion. Well, that's pretty rough, which is why I thought about that too. Both I've... of these are pretty rough, guys. It's all bad. <laughs> no, <they're> really <laughs> exhaustion's better than action because you still, you have choices, but then, you know, First, your abilities go down, then your, you know, your attack goes down. I like exhaustion. Okay. I think it's... Hear me out, though. Mechanically, though, when you're down, mm -hmm. you get rock up to one HP, mm -hmm. you're still on the ground. You have to spend an action to get up. Well, half, so your, half, half, half your half movement. movement. Oh, no, that's true. You're right. You're right. I tell you what, the other side, to Robert's point of exhaustion, which I don't dislike, because I have liked that for a long time, what I would argue if we want to go that route, it would be exhaustion, but the exhaustion levels don't take effect until after the fight concludes. 
as your adrenaline is pumping during the fight to keep you going. So if you go down a couple of times and come back up, exhaustion would come into play, but you wouldn't get hit with it till after the combat ended. So it's not like you're going to be screwing yourself over during the fight. But then when you get out of it, it's just going to be like a ton of exhaustion hits you all at I once. Like, I don't like Robert's smirk during all this. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo I, think it's, I love it in combat. I, I'll tell I'm for the maximum. You really just want to, you just run, you want everybody to be hurt. No, huh? I like, I like, Robert, just... I like risk reward. I like risk reward where it gives us, I like stakes that, 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 that go in. Oh, and I hate a well seasoned yo-yo. I agree. <laughs> I, I hate yo-yo is not. Yeah. I want it. it uh, yeah. Like I want takes, there to be, it takes the urgency away of combat. It takes away the, you know the the finality of like we can't just go in guns mm. blazing all the time so ted I, will kill I, us I will agree. though ted will you know happily kill us but if i die us. i die uh, uh, i don't want you to die i don't and... i don't i don't <laughs> live uh, bronson barley does not live for fear okay sounds like bronson live his barley life. may not live at all after this <laughs> <laughs> Um, another thing that, again, it won't, hopefully it doesn't come up at all, but obviously we're talking about going down to zero, so you never know. Uh, we're going to do death saving throw rolls private between the players and the DM so that other people at the table don't know how close you are to dying. Because I've played at games where you roll it at the table and you're like, you've got two failed saves. I'll get you next turn. Like, it's more important that I do this. And it, it could be a two failed saves at that point. Somebody rolls a one. So we'll do that behind the scenes. Mm. And then you guys will see as things happen. Um, LB, you were quiet on the whole exhaustion action scenario. What are your thoughts? You're muted, though. You are. But I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested to try it. Uh, I, I really have no preference one way or the other. I, I don't like being too punished for things, but uh, I, could, I could give it a go. All right, I tell I you, die, I think if we play our you, cards right, we shouldn't be going down that often. You, if you go unconscious three times during the fight, it's gnarly, and that's when it really, you know, that's when you have disadvantage on attack rolls and saving throws on the third time. Like mm -hmm. you are the you, the pain cushion. Like what's, at that what's point, what's the first level that's of exhaustion? Be me, that's uh, saving throws, Ab ability it's, checks, disadvantage on ability checks, okay. and then it's speed, right? Then speed is halved than disadvantage on attack rolls. So it's gotta be three times. Yeah, if you're getting yourself knocked down three times, because disadvantage is crippling at that point, but three mm -hmm. times in a fight, yeah, no, you deserve all the negative effects at that point. <laughs> all right, yeah. well, well, here's what we're doing. While we talk about a couple of other things that are going on, I threw a poll in the Twitch chat. You guys tell us which one we should do. How about that? Okay. Twitch, vote on the poll. You guys are free to vote on it yourselves. Put your... <laughs> Vote, you know, vote for what you want. I put exhaustion in combat, exhaustion post combat, or loss of action. We'll let the chat decide, and then we'll just yeah. go with it. I do uh, like your, I, I do like, uh, you know, the uh, the adrenaline factor. Mm. I wouldn't mind an adrenaline factor of of like one. Okay. Or may, or maybe you roll for the Hulk out. Ooh. Because like, okay. I love rolling some dice. So like. Okay. Mm. Huh. Yeah, I, I just, you know, I also thought it would be like. You know, people survive the end of the fight and then like, because in theory, if it was just a long drawn out, not a level one fight and you somehow manage to hit yourself six level of exhaustions in the fight, but you're still going and then the fight ends and then you just drop dead because you like you were so you managed to make it through and do it and then you just dead immediately when the fight ends could be interesting. Uh, I, I am versed in demon slayer. Fights. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, another thing uh, uh, to mention, too, is um, uh, Jonathan's playing the Phoenix uh, Soul Sorcerer, which was originally an Unearthed Arcana. The version that he's actually playing is my updated kind of homebrew version of that that fixed some of the issues with it, giving some more spells and things like that. So that may be a little bit different if you're used to the way that works. And... Because I had another player do it, I developed a Phoenix Sorcerer specific wild magic surge table, uh, which we will be utilizing in this game for Jonathan's character as well. So be on the lookout for some wild fire based things to happen. 
And we did homebrew <coughs> the rules. Yes. Why don't you tell 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 the people how it works? It uh, it stacks. It's not just on a nat one. Um, it uh, on each success, the range increases from one to two, one to three, one to four, etc. Until I explode, and then we'll reset back to one and keep building up uh, with successes. So, super excited for that. Um, and I'm going to put favorite. you in charge of tracking that, so I don't oh, have I to. Will. So I don't have to keep oh, track. No, no, no. I, it's all on. I, there's nothing more than I love, which is part of why I love sorcerers. I mm. love wild magic searches because it's it's just a little bit of extra uh, chaos in the group. Uh, and lastly, because it may come up with some of the things that the party members have, I have developed over the course of many years a series of class-specific trinkets. There is a hundred specific trinkets that range from kind of ridiculous to potentially almost common level magic items, depending on what they are. And all of our party members have rolled two of those so far. One of the things that you guys can actually do via channel points, you'll see for 2,500, there is an option to give somebody a trinket. So I'll work that and weave that into the story as time goes on. Uh, so you can feel free to do that. And they can be pretty wild uh, in usefulness or, you know, they could be a key to a timeshare in the Beastlands. You never know. <laughs> um, which, I mean, who knows, right? That could become useful. We don't we don't know how that works. Um so just other things to keep an eye on as time goes on. And we'll, I'll have more information and pop-ups on screen and stuff for this in the future. So that'll be easy for you all to tell. That being said, I think we're going to actually dive in to the game itself. But I'm just going to check the results of our poll and see where we stand right now before we dive in. Because we still have, I think, a couple minutes left. Uh... Exhaustion in combat is currently winning with 50%. So, uh, the other two Except are... for the sixth level. <coughs> I think we should take that last level. Oh, it's it's time. changing. It's changing oh. dynamically as we speak. Oh, wow. my God. It is, oh, my God. In real time. It is, cha it is now tied. Exhaustion in combat. Oh, oh, the, everything. It's all even. This is wild, folks. Uh, What's happening? Guys. Exhaustion post-combat. Somebody winning. needs to... Post or start talking like a race announcer. And here we go. You see, uh, exhaustion <laughs> post combat has made its way. Go. <laughs> uh, we still have. Oh, oh, it's tied again. Exhaustion in combat. Exhaustion post combat tied as we speak. Coming the down count, the wire. The countdown is coming down. I don't know how much time is left exactly. They are tied again. Oh, Your transatlantic accent is on point. Jake. <laughs> ah, why? Well, thank you. Here we go. Oh, hang on. Thing to do. It's coming down to the wire. Here we go. Post one ahead, but it is close. We have a forty percent lead. And I, I, I love the thought that these are actual horses' names. Exhaustion hey. post combat has one with six to five. So we will be using exhaustion post combat, which means if the party members go down to zero hit points in combat, they will gain a level of exhaustion that will be transferred to them post combat. Now that's for every time we go down to zero hit points. So petite people could be ending a combat with three levels of exhaustion or again, more incentive to use our updated version of healing to possibly prevent something like that from happening. Um, so I have one final question. If we're updating healing, let's mm -hmm. say to double down, could that perhaps also be a lay on hands amount of healing in so you're trying to argue that you want to double the amount of healing from lay on hands. Is that what I hear from you, Jake? That could be what I'm trying to argue, yeah. It could. If every other healing is... He's doing it in character. You I gotta... Mean, it, it stands one to could reason. could posit, yes. Yeah, it, it makes sense. If one... Listen, all healing is, <coughs> is, is healing, right? So, I... Yeah, I see the argument. Okay, all right. Let's see. That's a good... That's a good point. I, I don't disagree with your point. Now, I'm gonna just check one thing. And because I stole the updated healing rules from the most recent Unearthed Arcana tied to uh, the 1 D&D rules, which is where those updated healing came from. I'm going to look at what they did for the Paladin. And I will tell you, because they clearly made the rule to change healing for spells. But what did they do for our good friend the Paladin? I believe they kept it the same. Oh, you know what they did, though, Jake? I'll, okay. I'll, I will concede this 
to you as the paladin of this group, even though I'm letting you keep using all of the other things that are way better for smiting purposes. That's totally fair and reasonable. Lay on hands has been formally shifted to a bonus action. So I will give you, to even it out, we'll give you bonus action, lay on hands. Other than that, that is beautiful. Who everything hates well themselves and made lay on hands still an action? I mean, I made it a magic item in our first ever campaign so that Jake <laughs> oh, could yeah. do it as a bonus action. So It was necessary. We, we went down all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So uh, we talked a little bit about the the backstory and kind of a little bit about the rules but basically we're going to now dive in to the campaign proper here again so if you're following along at home you can turn to page 15 of Fandelver and below the shattered obelisk and you can read along with me uh um <laughs> that being said I felt like a sermon for a second yes um turn your turn to page 15 Fandelver, so three <laughs> yeah <laughs> chapter one yeah. Um, our party and again we can kind of play this out a little bit but they some or all of them know our good friend Gundren Rockseeker of the Rockseeker brothers who now also officially has art which is nice after all these years he and his brothers have found something a lost mine if you will and they are going ahead to the town of Phandalin and they're looking to start reopening the mine, do something with it. And they said, we're going to go ahead, sort it all out. We'd like you guys to carry, to bring with you, uh, we want to travel light. Here's a cart. Here's two oxen. Bring this into the town of Fandolin. We'll pay you 10 gold pieces when you get here. Take your time. Uh, we'll see you when you get there. Just bring them for us. You can, you know, do whatever you need to do. See you there. So the party has this now. You have this cart. Uh, again, we're establishing that Gundren is at least potentially a friend of one or all of you. There is about a hundred gold pieces worth of materials in this cart. It's mostly, again, rations, mining materials, picks, axes, things you would expect to do mining. Um, and then you obviously also have these two oxen. And you're traveling down the road, heading towards the town of Phandalin. Um, <clears throat> that being said, because this comes up all the time, and I'll, I'll preempt it. Do we have names for our two oxen that are pulling Bust, the... Buster. Okay. Buster is one of them. All right. Uh, Clarence. Clarence and Buster. Clarence and Buster. <laughs> the oxen pulling the cart. Um, so... I'll read, I have some box text here, again, page 16, for those of you reading at home. You began your adventuring career in the city of Neverwinter. A dwarf named Gundren Rockseeker hired you to bring a wagon load of provisions to the rough-and-tumble settlement of Phandalin, a couple of days' travel south of the city. Gundren was clearly excited and more than a little secretive about his reasons for the trip, saying only that he and his brothers had found something big. And he'd pay you 10 gold pieces for escorting the supplies that we talked about to Barthen's Provisions, an outpost within the town of Phandalin. All right. Set out ahead uh, on a horse along with a warrior escort named Sildar Hallwinter, claiming he needed to arrive early to, quote, take care of business. You spent the last few days following the high road south from Neverwinter, and you've just recently veered east along the Tribor Trail. For those of you who are familiar with the Sword Coast, these are roads and things that you're aware of. These are well-traveled, usually pretty safe means of travel. You've had no trouble so far, but you know this territory is a high road for travel. So could be dangerous, could be not. These guys travel, it's just the two of them went ahead with nothing. You guys are clearly four adventurers. Some of you come from a long line of adventurers. You know all about this. You're not really that worried. So, who's driving the wagon? Hmm. How does this... Well, actually, I guess that's... Give me your layout. We'll say the wagon's big enough. Two people can kind of sit up front, a driver, someone sitting shotgun, and the other two can sit in the back or walk alongside. I don't know what your your kind of marching orders are, but you guys tell me. What is I the will... weather like? Uh, We'll say that it is like 60 degrees cool 
windy, sunny skies. I will definitely be on a kick seat okay. in the back of the wagon because I would be picked up on the way down from Neverwinter since Bronson patrols <clears throat> uh, Leyland to Fandelver and in kind of in, into the bread basket. So I will definitely be on a kick seat in the back of that wagon. Okay. Um, I, I don't think I, I mean, I could be driving or helping drive the cart. I think I'm probably more just wanting to be closer to the animals, but. Does anybody have proficiency? Does anybody have proficiency in land vehicles? Just to throw it out there out of curiosity. Is that a thing? It is yeah. a thing. Yeah. Land yeah. and, yeah. and yeah. water vehicles. No. Okay. Nope. It's just worth a shot, right? Shot in the dark. But you know what? You tried and, and we failed. That's fair. They uh, are smelly beasts. That's for sure. Yeah, Seneth not being used to long travels on foot is definitely in the back of the wagon. Close to if Soot's in the front trying to drive, uh, he's definitely closest to so he can peer through the curtain and chat. All right. Uh, all right. I'll sit up front as well then. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, this is something else that I forgot to mention, which was a homebrew rule, which I'll pop in here in case people want to make that decision change quickly. For each positive point of intelligence modifier that you have, I will give you an extra bonus language of your choice. Ah. So, again, consider that if you'd like to add that, and that's another rule that I add because intelligence is criminally underrated. So, mm -hmm. um, that being said, Shame. you've been on the Tribor Trail now for about half a day and are nearing a side road that leads south towards Phandalin. As you come around a bend, you stumble upon a scene of a recent battle. The woods press close to the trail here with a steep embankment and dense thickets on either side. Two horses are wandering in the road, sniffing at ransacked personal effects. Mm -hmm. What would you like to do? Oh. Can I roll a perception check on uh, <clears throat> what's in the road? Sure, good. Let's pull these suckers off to the side a little. So, yeah, that's a big, that's a niner. Uh, uh, yeah, they're, they're definitely the two horses. Oh. <clears throat> that's about it. Hold on, hold on, everyone. Stop the <clears throat> cart. Stop the cart. Okay. What we have up here, and I'm going to slide off that kick seat mm -hmm. and sling my shield out and my war hammer, and I'm going to go walking towards the middle of the road. Let me see what's going on over here. Okay. okay. As you approach... You I'll jump with them, too. Okay. As you approach, you can see... They're just, they're just kind of milling about these two horses. You can see they do have saddlebags on the horses, um, but you can't tell if they're way down or anything from the distance that you're at right now. Um, but anyway, you two approach uh, closer here. Uh, let's see. Be careful. As oh. we help. As that is said, pop through right there. <laughs> um, we are going to. Um, what's everybody? What is uh? What is Bronson and Bishop's passive perception? Oh no. Oh, a solid eleven. Right. I should be better. <laughs> Can I hit... question DM? Yeah, far far away. I have a fourteen. Mm -hmm. But can I roll? You want to make an active perception Actively check? Actively perceive it. I, I just despise not rolling. Sure. Go ahead. All right. I love your argument is I just don't, I, I don't like it. Hey, man. That's a, that's a 20. Important. I love it. Risk, hey, risk, risk reward. Sometimes he's not on his game. All right. All right. So, na so that was a dirty 20? Yeah. Dirty 20. Okay. Uh, so, I'm going to say that as uh, Soot echoes, be careful to all of you, mm -hmm. to walking up there. Bronson, as you make your way closer to the horses, you kind of hear like a twig snap as you see 
arrows start to fly from the thickets nearby towards you. You, sir, are not surprised going into this combat that is happening right now. I would like everybody to roll for initiative, please. Very well. I, I'm surprised because I'm turning back like it'll be okay. That's a hot five on initiative. Okay. Oh, buddy. Okay. What the fuck? Here. Okay. I was going to say, I know there's a way to... I forget how the encounter thing works in, uh, in D&D Beyond, so I'm not going to mess with it because I have to figure oh, out how the, to do it. The counter builder. Yeah. yeah, there's a way to do it, but... 21. 21? Wow, not Jake. for me. I got oh. a 13. I oh, got a 13. okay. No, I, got no. a, I got a 21. Yeah. Bishop's got a 13... So it's got a 21, yeah? Mm hmm And LB? 17. So it's got a 17. All right. Let's see. Ow. I really wish I could. I should have figured this out ahead of time. Well, next time, I'll have this all planned out. Um, Let's go ahead and pull up some dice. And I will... Time for some Fodlin wins from Fire Emblem oh. Three Houses. Let's Hang go. On. Hang on. I've got... I've got this sweet orange D20. This is not my normal die. I want everybody to know because that could be important. This is just from that dice calendar so many of you saw me open over so many days. All right. So that's actually pretty shitty. So good for you guys. <laughs> um, so I'm going to say uh, because nobody was really... Let, nobody here has alert as a feat, correct? No. Correct. All right. So I'm going to say for the purposes of this because this is a surprise kind of ambush situation... Uh, Seneth and so you see the arrows come flying from the woods towards both Bronson and Bishop. I'm going to throw an arrow at each of you. Well, that's a natural. Yeah. That's a natural one. Uh, gotcha. you. that's a 12, 12 Bronson. A twelve doesn't hit you, right? Nope. AC eighteen. All right, Ooh. and then we'll AC. see. Yeah, for real. Uh, all right then. Towards Bishop, we've got a 15. Ooh, nope. All right, and a 13. All right. Ooh. So uh, all the, you see everybody just miraculously dodge all of these arrows. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and everybody. It doesn't move, it just goes. <laughs> and everybody is surprised, except for you, Bronson, who you can now see what you saw coming up. Four goblins, two on either side of the road, all currently wielding short bows, what would you like to do? Time to teach you little f who the lion of Leyland is. And I'm just going to slam my Warhammer onto my shield, casting Word of Radiance on all them. Constitution save, DC 14. All right, Constitution saving throw... 13 plus their zero constitution means a fail for all four. So go ahead and roll that damage for me. Three. All right. So you watch as... Oh, describe to me your word of radiance. Or what is the word of radiance that you use? The it, It's not an actual word. It's okay. when, I, <clears throat> when I slam down my Warhammer onto my shield which has the, the barley crest between the two tankards and the white rose growing out in between both of them <clears> and the sprigs of barley on the outside. So when I hit it, it's just like a small explosion kind of like druid craft of where I'm standing at. It just kind of life sprouts up, up around me. All right. Yeah, you guys see all of this happen. Uh, all of the goblins are summarily smacked by this damage. Uh, and then we're going to roll right back around to the top of the order. Seneth, you're up first. Uh, well, Seneth has just poked his head out, and it's got <laughs> the curtain draped around him from the wagon when all this was happening. Uh, Roy, so are we are we helping, or are we just... <coughs> yeah, I think so. That I mean, they seem pretty capable, but, I mean, we're adventurers, so we got to do adventuring stuff. Right, right, right. And we're not keeping one of the goblins, right? Because you don't... I know you've got a thing for creatures, but I, I mean, just just go. We'll figure it out. All right, take I'll, their I'll lead. I'll I'll try to maim one for you. Okay. I'll I'll pop out. I won't I won't even pop out. I'll pop back in, and then I'll just stick my staff out through the wagon curtain, 
Mm -hmm. and just cast a firebolt at one of them. All right. Well, let's go ahead and see if we trigger wild magic surge on our firebolt here, I guess. Let's start with a, first of all, an 18 to hit. Definitely hits. And then let's see. How do I roll just a d20? Where's my dice roller? Be the bottom left, I think. There it is. Get out to see. Let's see if I can get a. Nope. So oh, wow. one to two now for my one. All right. Imagine on my first roll if I got a wild magic. Imagine <laughs> if it was the one that's like fireball and it kills the ox and the cart and just destroys. Just, we're just dead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. give me that sweet, sweet damage. Da, 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 da. It is. It's, uh, that can't be right. <laughs> oh. Just one damage. Oh, but... I see one. <laughs> Uh, hold, on, hold on, but I've got I've got my my feature. Oh, which makes it a two, uh, right? Yeah, I treat it as a two, so I do two fire damage. I uh, think I think I think I forgot <laughs> to pull the curtain back, and I just put the my staff out with the uh, crystal at the end, my focus, and I just blind fired. So I kind of kind of hit missed a little bit. Well, um, we talked about it a little bit ahead of time, and he is present, so that was the very special, special maneuver with your two points of fire damage. So close. Oh. With your with your first Jake special of the game in the first oh. combat, folks. For those nice. of you who don't know, the Jake special is leaving an enemy at one hit point. Uh, that being said, uh, Soot, we have four goblins, one hanging on by a thread, three others. What would you like to do? Um, I am going to Soot uh, kind of like places the reins next to her and just says stay um and then she's gonna jump down um and she's going to uh are they within 30 feet definitely okay uh she kind of reaches her hand out and uh a little like black like soot kind of appears on her fingers and she is going to cast uh infestation uh Ooh. in their area okay so they need to make a constitution saving throw what size area is infestation? 30 feet. Uh, is it single target or? The range, oh, hold on. Cause a cloud of mites, please. The, oh, yes, yeah, just one target. Sorry. Okay. So you've got four goblins. There's the one that Seneth already hit. Do you have a preference of who you're going for? Are there any that are further back, like with a bow? But oh, they all have bows currently. So. Oh, um, I'll just hit the one that's furthest in the back. Okay. Whatever, uh, if it hasn't been hit. Uh, they've all been hit because they got hit with the word of radiance. Oh, so that's right. Um, Sitting so the cicadas on them. Uh, so it is. <laughs> what was uh? What is <laughs> your Const constitution? And it's a fourteen. Unfortunately, it rolled a seventeen, so it's going to succeed. Okay. But describe right. to us how this infestation. You, we talked. We talked about soot on your fingers. What kind of bugs yeah. are you sending out? Yeah, so she, as this uh, reaches out and she starts to speak these magical words, her uh, a little flea kind of hops to the middle of her finger, and as it pushes out, uh, a uh, infestation of fleas start hopping on the ground around the foot of this creature, sort of like a the coming out of the earth. Uh, I want to use a reaction, actually. Okay. And silvery barbs him. Ooh. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Hey. It's starting. It's like that. Okay. It's like that. I like Listen, it. Listen, we're, we're level one. We can't take any chances. with <laughs> That is in Natty one. Go ahead and roll that damage, hey. LB. Beautiful. Oh, nice. Okay. All right. 1d4 poison damage. <laughs> it's one. We're on a roll, baby. <laughs> so we're level one, baby. That's right. Uh, I'm going to give the advantage to Bishop, by the way, because they're... It's going to move uh, five feet in a random direction. Okay. As it does so, it's going to roll a d4. And I guess you can kind of decide since you're not... We're not using a map. Uh, yeah, I'll... He moves east. Yeah. Okay. Five feet. Mm-hmm. Ah. Uh, and that was... That was your action, right? Anything else? That was my action. Uh, she's going to move over towards the horses. Uh, do they seem perturbed by all of this? Yeah, they are rearing and spitting, kind of yeah. like looking where to go, because they're not really sure, because they've yeah. got you and your ox and your cart, but then there's yeah. this other guy who made a big old light thing show up, and then mm -hmm. 
Now there's goblins, so they seem real kind of yeah, spooked by this. Her maybe her next turn is going to be to calm them down. Okay. Ah, well, of course. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> Noble beasts. Um. Oh, beautiful. All right. Uh. So after Soot is Bishop. All right. Well, in that case, I will draw my rapier and I will uh, frolic over towards uh, one of the healthy, undamaged, not the on fire guy. Um, and I will say, have at you, you sniveling knave. And I will roll with advantage because of silvery barbs. Sniveling knave. I thought I was supposed to be the pompous one. <laughs> okay. Uh, will a 14 hit this fellow? A 14. We'll miss this. Oh, wait, no. He's using a bow, so it will, in fact, hit him. Aha. Yes, we have shields for a reason, my friend. And I will do Incredible. a What kind of loincloth check. is this guy wearing? <laughs> ah, ah, you fool. You didn't make any sense. And I will deal 11 damage to him. Wow. Okay. Uh, so this and was... I helped. So this was... <laughs> we were here, too. This was one of the guys that was undamaged, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Or more, not undamaged, but not the one that had been plinked not, away. Not either the ones that had been hit previously, as my modifiers should kill these guys. All right, yeah, yes, it should. Uh, and you do, in fact, bring down this goblin. Now, what uh, what weapon are you using? How does this... I'm using a rapier, and I go, and I give him a flick across his ear, and then stab him right in his mouth. Okay. Now, for those of you who haven't caught on... First time I've ever played with a dexterity-based paladin, which is what Jake is running, which is pretty interesting for me. Yes. I forgot that for a second. I thought he was a bard. Yeah, right? It feels like a bard, right? Yeah. I've got the charisma of a bard, and yet none of the spells. All right, that is one goblin down. People forget how strong that rapier is, man. That's right. beautiful. Anything else for, uh, for Bishop? Uh, I move in towards the next one with his longbow. Okay. I'm assuming uh, you're you're duelist with it, where you get the uh not the, yet. I have no that's level style. two. Oh level two. level one paladin is the worst. It's only lay on hands and divine sense. <laughs> God, when I you am, get duelist, you'll you're you're gonna be doing like twenty points of damage. By the grace of God go I. Uh all right. Jesus Lethander Christ. Uh, you're a Southern Baptist paladin. <laughs> uh so you close into this next goblin, it is now their turn. Hmm. The goblin you close into is going to drop his bow and pull forth a scimitar and attack you we'll see how he does how oh, you little... oh that's a 14 i'm assuming that misses it does indeed i <laughs> i uh i knock it away with my shield all right and then the other two that are still alive one being infested with bugs another recently singed will shoot arrows at bronson here so first short bow attack is a 13 which i think is gonna miss Pink. and a 19. 19 will hit. All right. So you are going to take seven points of piercing damage. <laughs> it's not even me. Uh, oh, and oh, no. the one that you were for that attacked you with the scimitar there, uh, Bishop, is going to disengage as a bonus action. And run off, just continue to start moving off into the woods. Come back here, you little fellow. Uh, all right, and then it's going to be Bronson's turn. You little shit. <laughs> <laughs> the one that hit me is running away, correct? No, they stayed. They're they're trained on you with bows. They're like, we got this. We're gonna take this guy down. All right. I will first with my bonus action reach out, and I'm gonna pull my flask out okay from inside mm -hmm. pull off the cap and i'm going to slam my goodberry wine okay all right that will consuming one berry i'm assuming you're gonna let me consume a berry on a bonus action right yeah sure okay uh so as life cleric i get <coughs> on a good berry I believe I get four, four. Yeah. Yeah, four HP back. I'm gonna go <laughs> back to nine. Yep. 
I'm just gonna have it. It's just, it, it's a massacre. It's just purple all. Oh, up that blonde my, hair, uh, that blonde beard is all purple now. Uh, and uh, I am going to take my hammer, and I'm gonna. <laughs> And I'm not concerned with the ones that are locked into me. I'm looking at the one running away. Okay. It's, uh, is he uh, 60 feet? Uh, yeah, he's within 60 feet, yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to send electricity out of my hammer with a lightning shock. All right, let's see it. Oh, sweet Neptune. 13 to hit. Oh, uh, wait. This was the guy that attacked Jake with the scimitar, so he didn't have his shield up which means his AC is 13. Let's go! Go get him, buddy. Couldn't take the shield and the sword out at the same time, so... Eight points of lightning damage. And he is just electrified. You see that, you know, 90s cartoon video game where you see the whole skeleton, you know? Uh, and then he just drops to the ground dead as he's trying to run away. No, I level up. Sorry, I had to <laughs> I had to ask. I know it's uh, that's fair. Uh, it is split four <laughs> ways, so no. Um, but I like where your head's at. Uh, anything else? Uh, that, I think that's probably it for just Bronson. Just trying to live over here, man. Just trying to live. And we'll go back to Seneth. There is the slightly singed goblin that you singed before, and the one that's been infested with some bugs. I. Uh, poke out again mm -hmm. realizing that i missed last time I'm, oh i better stand down actually and yeah. crawl through and sit and i'll aim with my staff and i'll once again <clears throat> a firebolt um the 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 infested one because i think that one didn't take as much damage it did not so, yeah then I'm, I'm gonna hit that guy okay roll your to hit roll the surge let's see what we're doing does a 23 hit? By, yes. Very, very much so. Okay. Oh, for... You see it kind of like swat, swatting like bugs, and it just... Yeah, uh, two fire damage. <sighs> I think we might start calling this the Jonathan special at this <laughs> oh, point. Yeah, <laughs> I am. <laughs> you, know, you know what my problem is? I'm, I'm rolling digital. That's probably what All right, let's go physical then, man. Do it up. No, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll still take the two, you, but I'm, I'm going to change it oh, up. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, no, that's, that's fine. Line. That's fine. Yeah. And did you trigger the surge? Ooh, let's roll for that. Because this could be that's, fun. Oh, it feels so dangerous. Oh, is that a one or a seven? I can't tell what this Seven. Is. Dang it. Nope. Ah, damn. We're, we're one to three now. All right. So, after that, uh, soot, uh, anything else for Seneth before we move on? Uh, negative. That's, that's all he's got. Oh, quick question. Just yeah. For future reference, mm -hmm. Mage Hand. Yeah. Do you operate a Mage Hand the same way that like Baldur's Gate 3 does, where it has its own turn initiative? I haven't, but it's actually a thing I've been thinking of because I really like how they handle it in Baldur's Gate. <laughs> handle it. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, you see. <laughs> puns. Because I'm, I'm, I'm curious, in the future... I, you know what? That? I. This seems like as good a time to give it a shot. So I would say, in the future... We'll give it a try. We'll have Mage Hand function like Baldur's Gate, where it gets its own turn, can do things, but obviously it can be you know targeted and destroyed like a Mage Hand can be. In Baldur's it's Gate. only got like one health. Yeah, so yeah. But yeah, I, I think it could be fun to try it. I'm what the hell? Up. Okay. Okay. I love that. All right. Um. Yeah. I. I mean, it could be. I could see it. You know. I mean, that could be the difference between life and death of you guys. Of I'm this mage, mage hand, hand dumping the... a potion on somebody or whatever. I was going to say, I'm going to have a mage hand constantly carrying a potion. <laughs> uh, so it is your turn. Um, so there are two up still? <laughs> yes, with the, as, as, as barely alive as one can be while still being uh -huh. alive. Uh, I'm going to aim at the, uh, the one that is barely alive. Uh, and Either one. With my short, she's going to pull out a short bow and, and pull it back and say... Um, are are we gonna try and keep one of these guys alive? <laughs> She's gonna let it rip. Okay. Uh, does fourteen hit? There we're using bows, so yes, a fourteen does hit. Hell yeah! All right, that's five damage. All right. Well, he had one hit point, so this guy will absolutely fall down via your short bow. Mm -hmm. And we have w anything? Well, anything else? Yeah, that's she just poses the question as she 
gets him right in the shoulder and he goes. <laughs> he dies. Uh, all right, Bishop, you are up. There is one left. He's on the other side of the road. You do still have enough movement to get over there to get that guy if you'd like. He's hovering around death with his one HP. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, I will walk up to him and I'll say, yield, as I point my rapier at him. Uh, Is he giving a goblin quarter? And he just says, no. All right, then I bonk him on the head. <laughs> okay. Roll to attack. All right, non-lethally, hopefully. Good, fair. Let's see. Uh, that is a 17. That'll hit. All right, in which case I will strike him with the pommel of my rapier. And I say, I'll give anybody quarter. Bam! Um, and he goes, Bleh! and he falls down unconscious. You guys beat me in the first combat! Nobody died! Oh my god. I, yeah, I do the so fancy sketchy. Final Fantasy sheathing of my rapier. Do a fancy little sword trick, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I pick up this little goblin and I bring him back over to the uh, the cart we have here. And I um, say, I don't know, here you go, and I present it to Soot. Oh, I was going to deal with the horses. Oh, all right. Well, I just present him to Senate then. Here you go. <laughs> Just kind of just nudging him with my spear. I'm not Soot. What do you want me to do uh, with it? Um well, we can question it and see where its camp is, but um if we're not gonna stay around here, it doesn't really matter. We should loot. Well, we should at least look through what's going on we here with these horses and then their yeah. saddlebags. I will go over to the goblin. Okay. And I will <laughs> yeah. shake I will shake that baby. Where are okay. the of them? I know there's always 20 more of you. Where are they at? So you're just shaking this goblin awake, I assume, yeah? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and he's like... Aah! And he just kind of looks at you, and you're this purple, stained, blonde, bearded dwarf just shaking him. You uh, know better than fucking with the Lion of Lightning. Tell me where the rest of these little shit's at. Uh, and he kind of, like is groggily looking around you see him survey the situation all of his dead friends uh and he goes um ah. and he just kind of like points in the direction where the one was running is over that way may i insight this sure oh and i decided that i am going to uh i'm just going to contest all checks like whether it be so that I like if you're like, I insight to see if he's lying and I roll and you're like, well, clearly he's lying. So I'm just going to contest all like social checks so that it's not clear one way or the other. Is he lying or is he not? Sure. So go ahead and make your insight check. Ah, a natural one. I mean, you saw the one guy running that way. S said tracks. It is clearly the truth. These things are never telling the truth. He was the other man was trying to run that way. It's quite obvious. Perhaps you can set about looking for the goblin prince or whatnot. What's your name? Oh shit, you son of a bitch. That's uh, right. Get out that name generator, DM. Um, Everything's got a name. Goblin the goblin. His name is ASA Dalt. Dalt. Apt. That Dalt, Dalt. Mm hmm. Dalt, yes, I hear you. Listen here, Dalt. You know better than setting up on my roads. Don't act stupid with me. I'm going to give you one chance before you join the rest of your friends. Where's the rest of your tribe at? I'm going to roll an intimidation check. Mm. All right, go ahead. Can I help him? I will take my hempen rope and start making a noose. <laughs> Damn, all right, shit. <laughs> Wait, are we uh, murder hobos? I, I, no, mean, I think that's what's happening. This At is level one. God, setting a tone real quick. 
We are well, yeah. And just to double check to make sure that you're okay with it, mm -hmm. I have set my intimidation to my strength. Yep, that's fair. And okay. Here we go. There's a plus three coming in. He disrespects me. It's an eight. Uh, <laughs> I helped you. That's so an, advantage. That's an eight. Oh, you'll take that. Take that advantage from the help from the. Oh, oh, the advantage. Yes. Yeah. Thank from you. the from the noose being created in front of oh, the God. goblin. Well, I'm glad that we just became the uh, you know the 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 front of a Pantera shirt. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm looking at Bishop Blade. Does it? I'm like, what god do you worship? You know, it got better. It got better. That was a natural <laughs> one. So. Uh, it's, it's an eight. It's an eight. <clears throat> he goes, uh, uh, mm -hmm. oh, tired news. <laughs> and he, he'll, he'll point. And he says, they're, they're this way. I, 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 I could show you. Do you, uh, do you want me to? I, I'll show you the way. Yes, yes. Come with Dalt. I'll show you the way. I think we're gonna sit right here, Dalt. And I'm gonna pull out. A full good berry. Okay. And I'm gonna set the good berry about six feet away. Okay. Are you about to Goku this guy with a sensu bean? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <coughs> All right, Dalt. We can take care of what's been done here. And I'm not following anybody. You can answer one more question for me. Right. Who or what are you looking for? Yeah. And he says, I, I, we set up an ambush point because we knew people would be coming down this road. We thought we could just get more stuff unsuspecting people kill them take their stuff like we did with the people that were on those horses ah are they dead and i don't know they weren't but they oh, might be now that is wonderful i think perhaps maybe we should have this man lead us to this cave then where are the bodies at dog he says they're down there this, they're this way where's the so, you know, I could introduce you. Would you like to meet Clark? I can introduce you to Clark. He's kind of running the show. Uh, Sid's gonna walk up, uh, and just kind of like just appear, like shift behind the everyone else, just coming out of mm. seemingly nowhere. Ah, my goodness. Uh, tell me more about Clark. He's a bugbear. Oh, god, is he the leader? I mean, of this of this group, yeah. Mm hmm And and what is your role? Trail, people killer. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a family? I mean, yeah. Well, you know, as but we're all kind of a family, yeah. A found family. Family's yeah. important. Oh. Mm hmm Who's yeah. your best friend? Oh, that was. Oh no! <laughs> and he just points to the one that you shot with the short bow. Uh huh. Yeah. And what were all these guys' names? Of course. Uh, right. no, it's fine. Help me! How dare you? Then he goes. That was over there. My best friend. He goes. We just called him Jim. I don't actually know what his real yeah. name is. Yeah. Okay. Fair, fair. Well, is that J I M or G Y M? What? I don't know what those are. I don't know if he is literal. <laughs> right, sorry. Uh, I, that's rude to go ahead. assume. No, no, of go. course. Uh, and he go points. Ahead, take the good, take the good berry. Oh, and he'll like scramble over and he'll. When he's when he's got his back turned to me, I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> All right, you, no roll needed. You kill him. And he was like, he's like, hey, and he's like pointing. And he's like, that's blah, and then he's dead while he's explaining no. to the next. And I'm gonna go pick up the good berry and dust it off. It's got oh, like a little man. bit of goblin. It's definitely got blood on it, my man. Yeah. Oh, not a problem. That'll uh, I'll keep that one for myself. So, the... all right. What was that right. first goblin's name? Oh, that's Dol right. Dolt. Mm -hmm. what, what was the bugbear's name? 
Clark. 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 Of Clark. course, yes. Right. Once um, a man killer, always a man killer. Now, Roy, um, I understand that. Um, are these war crimes? What we've done? We were assaulted, so nope. War yeah. crimes. Attention. Defense. Right. Okay. No, war crimes. No. Also, from goblins think this is that are how. attacking on my route. Right. Uh-huh. No, it, it wasn't that part. That's not what I was worried about. It was the the false hope of freedom with the bludgeoning to the back of the skull. That was uh, more what I was referring to. And the noose. The noose didn't help. You know what? This is not the correct knot. Nah, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, you, yeah, the, yeah, the noose didn't yeah. work anyway. Like when he went to tighten it, it just kind of fell apart, which led to the natural one on the yeah. intimidation <laughs> check. <laughs> right. Well, I, I held it up and it fell apart. I let yeah. his own words hang himself when he said that he killed the individuals that were on these horses. Right. It is right. hard to commit a war crime against a guy whose occupation is labeled as people trail killer. <laughs> You know, that's that, right. You forgot a point there. Um, so we're going to <laughs> save these people then, right? Uh, assuming that they're still alive. Yes, perhaps. Uh, um, so and while you guys are horses? looking around, make me a, a survival check while you guys are over here. What the fuck okay. do you mean a survival check? Wait a minute. 11. Okay. 11. Uh, 11. 19. Wow. Damn. Three. So, uh... <laughs> So, so you're dancing uh, cicadas <laughs> around. Yeah, it's just really yeah. throwing things up. Yeah. Um, you guys, while while this is all happening, those of you who made above a ten, so everybody but Jake, um, you can actually see now that you're kind of the the intensity of combat has kind of calmed down, and you're kind of surveying the situation. The horses are still kind of um, they seem a little skittish. They're still present, but it mm-hmm. seems like mostly because they didn't know where to go. Like, what was the safe bet? Um, You can see kind of leading off in the direction where the one guy who you didn't learn the name of was running. um, Drag marks. Yeah. In the ground, as if one, maybe two uh, large, heavy things were being pulled through the brush and off in the direction that Dalt was telling you. Does it look like... Well, we know he was being honest. Yeah. Does it look like flat marks, or does it look like two grooves? Uh, it looks like they might have been traveling in single file lines to hide their numbers. How <laughs> dare you, Ted? <laughs> you fucking nerd. <laughs> um, so what you're telling me is there's a bunch of one-legged goblins. <laughs> um, oh, however, you will also, I'll also t- give you that the saddlebags on the horses are empty. So whatever was in them has oh, been looted. looted. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, sir, you don't need to raise your hand. We're all oh. democracy here. Okay. Oh, well, I just have a couple of ideas that I just wanted to put them forward before we start doing things. Uh, option one: um, I could pretend to be a goblin and go into the camp and uh, find out more, like a recon, or I could like bring you guys back as like, um, like spoils of war. And two, I could um, talk to the horses. And see what they know. Hmm. Okay. I I like both of these plans. Um, Thanks. So, kind of, what would the horse the know that <laughs> we haven't discovered? However. Well, that's true, but it would calm them down. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I, perhaps we could just calm them down with some sugar or carrots. Apples. Apple. You've never sure, been yes. around horses, then. Well, you know. You carry a lot of sugar cubes in your rations? Of course I do. For my <laughs> I tea. have a salt. I have salt blocks. Oh, she does have salt blocks. She loves um, salt blocks. I did also mm-hmm. just want to point out for everybody that, uh, you know, the, the prediction, the bet that I had in the chat of will the, any of the players die in this fight, I think... The, res- the answer was, obviously the answer was no, and I think, Jonathan, you're the only one who voted no, <laughs> so good job. I believe in that. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, so what is the plan? Yeah, uh, so take us to your leader, Clark. You got it. Uh, as an action, I would like to uh, use my changeling ability to look like an adult. 
Okay, you Please. do. You now are a goblin. What does it look like when you transform? Oh um, yeah. It's it's kind of like I I picture it as uh like from Harry Potter the how she like everything kind of just forms as she changes. Um, what's her name? Tonks. Hawk. Yeah. She. So like when she her form shifts lower as she becomes goblin size. Uh, her hair uh then from the roots grows out and changes. Um, and her like there's a little bit like it's a little disconcerting there's a little bit of cracking as her bones kind of get into shape um and she becomes a little male goblin uh do we want to flavor it like her clothes change with her uh mm, ooh. see this i have to be careful if i set this precedent now <laughs> it's because I mean, cool going forward like yeah, yeah. No, no you know the, which, the, what's, which ability is it you're using the, she's I'm a changeling changer. so yeah. So it's okay, natural... so changeling's uh, ability. So technically, it's just the form, just your body. So I could then. I'm gonna say that yeah, outfit. you're you're you don't get magic clothes. Maybe okay. that can be a oh, thing we look. It. Does it say it? It says it right in the. It says your clothing and equipment aren't changed by this trait. True. Uh, I'm gonna say. So you're uh, just like little doll. Underwear dolls. is. Uh, yeah, underwear does go with her though. Well, you're now shifting into no, doll who wasn't. Male. No, yeah. no dicks out for Harambe. <laughs> nah, I mean she wouldn't really care. But uh, no. so she, you see her kind of take off the the big clothes that she is wearing and folds them up, and then like puts on this. Pants I'm already, and, I'm already waiting. All this bloody with clothes. Yeah. Yeah. Put your clothes. We've done this so many times before. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'll all take right. those. Uh, th oh, dear Lord, what a voice. Oh, sorry. No, no, it's jarring and delicious. Wonderful. Oh, that I'm gonna begin to character. I'm ah! gonna tie the horses off onto the cart. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Yeah, there you want are. Do uh, animal handling or anything? Um, actually, yeah. I'm gonna say just given they're a little. There was talks of feeding them, but oh, yeah. then none of that's, that. I don't know if that happened. I'll help that's, you. That's that's a nine for me. So please, please assist. Well, we got we got to help, so we'll give you advantage on this. Go ahead. Go. For sure. Oh, Perhaps good. guide yourself, good man. I I got my hand up. That first like hoof comes back. And it's like, like head level. Oh no, oh no! I'm just gonna hook you up over here to Bustard. He's excellent company. I promise. More like it. Fifteen. All right. Yeah, you're good. Ooh, yeah. So yeah, you are able to tie off the horses. They're now, uh, with your two oxen and the cart. What is so? We've got obviously. Um, Soot has turned into Dalt and has donned those clothing. What was your plan? Were you going to just sneak ahead? Were you going to try to bring these people as like prisoners, or what was your plan? There was two parts to that plan, so it could have been gone either way. I think, um, uh, I mean, it would make sense for her to bring one person back okay. Uh, okay. as like a captive. And then everybody else. Can, who is this? Are we who are we splitting the party thing? right now? Is that what I hear? No. Okay, I'm just no. just checking for the level if one party. If you're gonna bring him some bait, bring him the lion of Leyland. Okay. Well, I they would uh, dislike. Well, I would, but I know you kind of got a little hurt in that battle. So I I think if I'm going into the belly of the beast, that I should bring someone who's not hurt. That way you can attack from behind, and it'd be really scary. Speaking of that, I'm going to take out a handful of flasks. Mm. And I'm going to give each of you some of that good old fashioned barley wine. Mm. Is this alcohol? Is this alcoholic? The boy. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take a small taste. How else would I preserve it? Mm. I'm fine. I'll pass you the uh the, the bloody good berry. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one that's not fermented. Thank you. <laughs> so if you if you drink it, it is four hit points. Oh just four flat static. Four, four stat four static, yep. Oh. That's not bad. All right. I will put it on my belt and then I will say, Oh yes, indeed. And I go into my backpack and I take out my little alms box mm. and I grab uh, four whistles and pass them around. Say, just in case. Chew with your whistles. Hey, man, you never know. 
All right. All right. Everybody's got a signal whistle and some good berries for for that. Um, I... What is the plan for the cart and the horses? Are you just going to leave them here in the road, or what's your plan? Well, we should probably what, move them to the side, behind a, a um, bushel, a tree. Uh, um, kill the oxen so they don't get stolen. What's the plan here? Not, <laughs> we can just buy them all, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, why, 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 why would you say that? How I, would we finish delivering the car if we kill the oxen? Uh, there's, uh, I don't know. We could probably just buy more, right? Like, there's got to be. They're living beings. No, I understand are, that. You no, are I'm putting the the car before the the oxen. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, don't you dare say it! <laughs> don't you dare say it! <laughs> We could, we could always just, I don't know, like, there's magic. I'm sure we can find somebody to just, you know. Okay, you know what? Let's just kind of, like, take them halfway, and that way they're off the road. Oh, I and... thought you meant halfway to death. I was like, how, how is no! that going to help? Uh, Let's beat no! them so they're tired. <laughs> we'll I, knock them unconscious and bring them back up the whole time. No! Shut up! No. Everyone stop! Of course right, okay. not. No, no, no. no, no right. sleep, no, no. Go to sleep. Here's the idea then. How about how about an ambush, right? Um, <laughs> um so you take uh, Bishop. He's your captive. Hello. Uh -huh. And then myself and the loin of Leland will wait in the back of the wagon. And you can guide us all straight into the heart oh. of the village. Yes. How do oh, I that's... make it back in this situation? Well, uh, I'll, I'll make, I'll tie your knots so they don't, well, they'll, they'll probably just be loose around your wrist so that you can just get out whenever you want. Or you could just tie your knot. You had a very good fake knot earlier. <laughs> it did not even hold for even a moment. No, it's phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> or, ooh, I've got it. I'll use Mage Hand to hold the rope in place so it looks like you're tied up. Your mage hand is not invisible, though, worth pointing out. That's fine. Okay, all it right. Has just st it has a high stealth. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I, I do have a set of manacles, which would work well for this. Um, my problem, again. Why are they fuzzy? Uh, those were the cheapest ones. I was running out of money. <laughs> uh -huh. um, I don't want. Look, didn't want to the do. four of us versus four <laughs> goblins worked great, okay? Oh. I don't uh -huh. want to have groups of two going around. There's right. an old adage, which is uh, do not do not separate uh, ever. No, for no, no, no reason. Uh, okay, well then I'll go in because I am I am this dolt, okay? And they won't suspect anything because I am dolt and I have a best mm. friend who died. Uh, uh, and then... Uh, and then I'll, and then you guys can come out when the time is right. So you'll, so we'll hide the wagon. You'll huh? bring the wagon in and be like, hey, we managed to kill the adventurers. whoop de doo But yes. I got the cart. And then we'll be in the cart. Yeah. It's a whole, uh, what do they call that? A, uh, uh, Brosian horse. Yes, of course. I've heard of that. Yes, yes. The great city of Brosian. <laughs> yes. Yep. Um, they, of Asian, ancient hang Greek. Hang on. How well could we get the wagon through the forest um okay well that's a good question i just had to write down the city of brosian so i remember that for later um so <clears throat> you don't know how far mm. this potential hideout is right you just gotta you have a cardinal direction and some drag marks to follow um it looks like from where you're at at the moment um, there is a trail that you can kind of see that leads through the woods. That, you know, obviously, the, the trees and thickets and things were a little denser here towards the everything came closer to the road, which made it an ideal ambush spot. So at least from what you can see in your eye line, you're not, it kind of looks like <clears throat> they might curve. Um, it looks like you can at least for a ways bring the cart and the oxen and the horses down so even if you didn't necessarily t be able to take them the whole way, you could at least get them off the beaten path and, you know, potentially stash them in the woods if you wanted to. <clears throat> uh, also an option is uh, we could just 
take all of the things and the horses that are here and go and then just tell somebody about what happened here and they can come deal with them. That's right. Well, mm. so we look through the saddlebags. They're fully looted. Uh, mm -hmm. Do we, we know the these horses? Because how far ahead of us did our good employers, Gundren and... Uh, Oh, what's that other fellow's name? I can never remember it. Sildar? Steve? Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, so, I, I mean... Did, did how... anybody else pass us on the way? You didn't really see anybody on your your way here. Um... Do -do 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 -do. Hmm. <laughs> and I miss you. Um... <laughs> uh... So I I don't know is bishops what's bishops knowledge of of Gundren's I guess horses or things of that nature um considering his knowledge of horses in general I would say low perhaps maybe the color of his horse Wait, here's a question sure are the horses branded uh -huh. would you like are the to the saddlebags perhaps monogrammed mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a thing I would have noticed and look, it's a pick. I every time you talk, I either love you or I hate you. <laughs> it's it's the a, genius. There appears to be a brand of Johnny Chimpo on this one. <laughs> yeah. What is this John John Chimpo? I believe it's Afghan <laughs> <That's animation. laughs> Um Alright, that's enough shenanigans. Yeah. Um <laughs> never. So yeah, I'll say um yeah, why not? We'll say that the there's a brand, but uh, we'll say there's also a monogram that has a G and an R on it, which happens to be Gundren Rock Seeker's monogram on these, uh, on why at least one of know? these. Well, this could be anybody, honestly. <laughs> we'll put the other one has an S and an H. We'll say the other one does. Everybody's got monogram saddlebags in the Sword Coast, if you didn't know. Well, it's I a used thing. To, it's yes. a trend. It is, it is, yeah. It's a fashion I think it's Gundam Rock Seeker and Shithead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, thought, I thought it was Shithead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it kind of looks like we got a problem here. Right, okay. Well, let's go then. Everyone in the cart. Get, tie the horses to the back. Yeah. I got this. She gets oh. up on the the seat and is like, a child sitting there. Oh, uh, she grabs the reins. All right, I'll jump in. I mean, what is your what is your deception? My deception? Um, it's I'm proficient in deception. Someone asked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's the, what's that number there? Uh, it's, it's two. Mm. Who's that Pokemon? Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay, that's fine. All right. I, the worst case scenario, I'll 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 figure it out. So we've yeah. got everybody's in the cart, and Soot is driving us down the road. Yeah. yeah. All right. We're um, just three men in the back, covered mm -hmm. under a blanket, and like, right. Um. Okay. And you're so you're just you're you're basically you're just following the trail as far as you can go. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I pull my handkerchief out and give it to Bronson. I'm like, come on, buddy, clean yourself up. I spit. Uncle Pimmican man, oh. at least like three. Yeah, this dude's definitely a chewer. Of course he is. Well, you can keep that then. All right. Uh, nice handkerchief. Thank you. Yes, it was expensive. Our guy will fit you. You're right. I yep. check it pass with a check it chief. Yep. It's not a thousand threat count. My God. Isn't All right. Awesome? So it's as you are. Uh, heading down the trail, um, as you're, you know, dalting away, LB, um, <laughs> the, uh, you, oh. you're just traveling along, like and one of the oxen, um, just steps onto a thing that you didn't see, which happens to be a snare trap, which now, follow, let... Help me out here, folks. So you've got a beast of burden pulling a cart. 
that gets wrapped up a leg in a snare trap. Now, this thing's affixed to the cart. Yeah. And the snare goes off. It fails horribly. What? Now, the way it's described is that if it was a character, they are flipped upside down and suspended 10 feet in the air. Uh -huh. And considered restrained. How do we think that works with a beast of burden attached to a cart? Uh, well, realistically, the way oxen are, are attached attached to cart, <clears throat> it would probably just like kind of be on its side with one foot up, like struggling with the other feet because it is physically attached <clears throat> to the cart. Mm -hmm. There ain't no way in hell that they've got a limb that's pulling that oxen up mm -mm. not a chance all right well you've got now your adult you have an ah. ox with like a rope tied around it and like a tree limb kind of ah. hanging uh, i'm gonna hop hop on onto the uh like contraption that holds the oxen in and she's gonna try and go and like cut the rope with a dagger. Okay. Hmm. The trees flying up there. And you're good. You're right. going. Okay. Well, uh, it looks like there are traps, guys. So I'm just going to sit up here and uh, and see if I can find them. This is a horrible idea. There's one trap already where they point to this to. There's obviously going to be more. It's not going back to the campsite. What do you want to do, buddy? Perhaps we should leave. Those drag option. marks are still continuing this direction. Does it look like they go for a while? It looks like they go, like, you can very clearly see, uh, even though they've been traveling single file at this point, they split to go around the snare and then come back together. And you can see where they split to go around the snare. There are two, like, deeper drag marks before they well, connect that the obviously side. changes things. <laughs> We're not paying attention to the damn trail. <laughs> Whose job was it to pay attention to the trail? I'm driving a car. I'm sorry. Right, and they're small. They can't see over the the, the ass of the oxen. <laughs> I'll what? pop out and uh, scout what? ahead a bit, uh, sneakily, perhaps. Did you say one of us? Could, what's what's your stealth, bud? Plus Didn't you eight. say you were the least sneaky? No, oh. no, me? No, I'm quiet as a mouse. <laughs> oh, that's right. You're a Dex build. I keep forgetting. Everybody that. forgets the Dex paladin. Uh -huh. Nobody there suspects the Dex Paladin. That's right. That doesn't right. say anything about my ability to roll well. That's mm. it's a start. Mm. All right, you go ahead, and I'll uh, I'll I'll call him old. What, what's the other one's name? Buster Clarence. and Clarence. Buster and Clarence. 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 I'll call him Clarence down. All okay. Right. Hey. Mm. Oh, I will say I didn't say this before. <laughs> When she when she changes, she has a tattoo on her arm, mm. uh, so that you always know who it is. Uh, it's a line of fire with little black uh, rocks at the bottom. Oh, okay, fire rocks. Sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, so you guys continue onward. Now you're up in front of Bishop yes, here, and you're indeed. you're you're tracking ahead. Okay. I would like to. Perhaps I could request uh, some guidance from my fine folks here. I got you. Smacks you on the back of the head. All right. Well, I'll take it. And okay. thank you. You continue traveling down the trail for about um, another 10 minutes or so. Can you make me a perception check there, Bishop? Ah, yes. The thing I'm most mediocre at. That would be a 12. Cool. Cool. Have we had enough time to stoke up a hit die? Uh, it has been 20 minutes, so no. Um, you can, if you want. Well, let me finish, and then you might want to. So let me finish what happens first. Uh, so, possibly going to be different because you're a dex-based thing. You're looking along, totally miss this thing. I need you to make me a dexterity saving throw, please, Bishop. Uh, well, this was always going to happen to me. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Oh, 18 plus six. Damn. All right. You dodge out of the way as the fake trail that you were stepping on gives way to a six feet wide, 10 foot deep pit trap. Mm -hmm. And then it collapses away. 
And you are very thankful that you decided to do this instead of the oxen falling into this pit trap. Dear um, God, just imagine what would have happened. So you Jesus, Lathander, Christ, I'm starting to get flashbacks to choke. Uh, there are not spikes. It's not like a punji trap. It's just a pit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's only a 10-foot deep pit. But as we discussed earlier, 10-foot deep falls <laughs> could do a lot of damage to you guys. But you dodge out of the way, and you are now in a situation where you can direct the cart around um, if you so hey, choose. Team, how do we feel about ditching the cart here at this point? Because <laughs> there's so many traps. Right, I've, I've, I've been thinking about that, actually. And what if we all lined up single file with a rope, right, tying the three of us? Well, Dolt guided us in as, as hostages. That way we all go in, nobody gets left behind. And then, yeah. Worst case scenario, we bribe them. Yeah. Do you have funds? I've got some gold, yeah. What would you yeah. say some? amounts to because i have seven gold right no i have a sum of gold yeah oh good <laughs> great great that is that's what he said yeah it was, i sure. mean what's case scenario i mean they have i'll to be take. dead honest with everyone i got all these money not trader joe's money okay all right i'm not bribing any of these <laughs> all right well we do have to think about like depending on the numbers i know you're super hype about like protecting the trail and doing all the murder and stuff but like you know we got to think about this tactically remember tactics right right yeah, like like when my father bought out a rival company to make sure that his stayed atop and he could monopolize the textile industry in the town that we were in it's tactics turns out tactics. that uh sometimes you just gotta pull up your bootstraps senneth's dad is the premier monogrammer for all of the saddle packs and all of the sword coast <laughs> oh god <laughs> Le Le fucking Leyland's a boomer <laughs> I'm not a boomer I'm a card carrying libertarian <laughs> oh boy <laughs> <laughs> oh, what right, a fucking well. crew I think we should do that plan and then also try to sneak up <clears throat> like we'll do our best to sneak up and then our backup is we're captives Mm hmm Okay. Yeah? So if we're sneaking, i like a stealth check from everybody, please. <clears throat> Before I sneak, mm -hmm. I definitely go over to Sinneth and, uh, if, uh, you want spend some good reading and help me out quite a bit, um, I pull out a copy of, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I hate you. I saw it coming from a mile away. As soon as we set the scene up, I was like, I know it's gonna come. If, if you're not interested in this, you can see Tony Robbins poking out from behind it. He's got the small pocket size. Just let me know. Yeah, actually, um, I think my, my father funded the printing of the book. Love to hear it. Small business. <laughs> Right, yeah, no, it's, it's great. It was over for dinner, uh, a fortnight, actually. Hey, guys, could I request perhaps that you're more quiet while we still? Oh, right, sorry. Uh, dirty 20, by the way. Okay. Also a dirty 20 with guidance. Right. Hey, let's go. Uh, natural 20. Oh, hey, fancy. Can I, can, I, can I guide myself? Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, of course you Good. Can. Casting guidance on yourself? Hell yeah. <laughs> you start reading the oh, book. Yeah. You start hearing them. <laughs> Tony Robbins, what would you? <laughs> mm. This is not going to go. Uh, oh, hey. uh, it did not roll my disadvantage, though. That's uh, that's unfortunate. All right, what we got? Oh, wow, beautiful. Oh man, I had a dirty twenty, and then I got <clears> thirteen. <throat> but I will add my one d four here. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Let's go. 16. All right. Pretty solid stealth rolls. You guys travel maybe another 10 minutes from where you'd initially set out. So just time frame wise, you've been about a half an hour since you left the ambush site. Uh, and you kind of come out into like a clearing area where you can see a little stream actually is running up 
into a cave here. There are some thickets around, and it it you can kind of hear what sounds like movement and things inside the cave, but you can't really see it. Like those of you with dark vision can see for a bit, but the cave kind of turns a corner, so you can't really see inside it. Hmm. And at the mouth of the cave, uh, the trail with all the drag marks kind of ends. Um, and a, again, the stream flows from the cave's mouth, which is screened by dense briar thickets. A narrow dry path leads into the cave on the right side of the stream. So like there's like a small little walkway you can travel along on the right side. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what you see. And then again, across from <clears throat> where that path is, there's kind of like thick trees and it kind of works its way back. Uh, kind of over there what would you guys like to do oh actually you guys have been very stealthy so i will say you can hear kind of you can't see because the trees are pretty thick but kind of on the other side where that entrance is to the cave you can actually hear uh what sounds like goblins doing goblin things you're not exactly sure what it is chatting you hear the sounds of possibly maybe like axes felling trees or stuff like that um goblins be goblin goblins be goblining um and actually can everybody make me a perception check <coughs> no you don't have to i lied no 19 man these high rolls today except damage that's okay you're doing an awesome job and i'm very proud of you thanks dad <laughs> I got a couple things I need to work out. <laughs> 13. Also 13. Okay. Um, LB, what did you get? I think I missed that. 18. Okay. Um, you guys can, I'd say between all four of you can tell, it sounds like three distinct voices of goblins kind of on the other side here. And this is still outside of the cave. This is outside of the cave, kind of in the thicket to the other side of it. Well, guys, we are, in fact, being quite stealthy. How about we uh, nix these fellows before we move on? Remove some pawns from the board. Okay. Should I go in first? Throw them off? And you guys can sneak around back. I love it. Okay. Uh, so you're going to... I'll, I'll tell you that the stream where you are right here, it's not really... It's like, uh, maybe it's like waist deep for adult, mm -hmm. but it would probably be about like knee deep for the rest of you. Uh, or maybe I guess knee deep for Bronson too, depending on how tall on the dwarf scale he is. I'm, I'm, I'm a bigger boy. Okay, so probably like knee height for the rest of you. You can just easily, it's not like uh, rushing or anything. It's, you could easily walk across it. Okay. I will still offer uppies. <laughs> All over right. adult. Okay. Uh -huh. Let's not let that adult goblin scent rinse away. Okay. Okay. Just picks you up, carries you across. Set you on the you, shoulder. You see Sut's feet kind of, like, swing a little bit on, on his shoulders. <laughs> I look at Seneth and I'm like, hey. You wanna, can I jump on your back? <laughs> no. Right, I thought you were gonna offer me. Um, oh, I'd I would hate to get my boots wet. Right, no. So, so what? I, this this is this is. You guys this could is, attempt to jump it. It is only five feet across. Yeah, no. This is draconian leather. I'm not about to get these. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to jump. All right. So with a ten foot running start, mm -hmm. uh, you guys can attempt to make that jump, and it is an ath. Athletics check, technically. Mm. Are is... there perhaps stones I could skip us across acrobatically? Yeah. Uh, you sh sure make me an acrobatics check. You know, being having been highborn uh, or at least richborn, uh, you know, with my dance lessons, could I perform your way? way across? Is that what no, you're just asking? A just acrobatics, my way across. <laughs> Sure. For me. All right, go ahead. Let me get an acrobatics check from you guys as you attempt to oh, dexterously shit. jump yourself across. Uh, 14. And? 
six. All right. You relatively, you jump on a couple of rocks there, Bishop, bup, bup, bup. you make your way across as kind of slowly trudging. Brownson makes his way across, carrying, uh, carrying soot slash dalt across. And then you see kind of stretching out, you know, getting the poise ready that he's so used to from all of his, you know, highborn balls and whatnot over here. Seneth goes to make his way across, following the same path, or so he thinks, that Bishop takes, but doesn't realize that one of those has more moss on it and jumps on that and then slips and splash. Oh, what do you got? What do you got? It's petty, but I am a petty bitch. Give me the petty. What do you got? Can I use my reaction to cast Featherfall, which allows me to land on my feet? <laughs> sure. Uh, so instead of splashing uh, in a seemingly odd... <laughs> Naruto-esque move of summoning chakra through your feet. You land <laughs> flat on the freaking water and are able to walk across, having, I think, spent your second spell slot for this? Second and last. And final spell slot. Spell slot? All right, just checking. And let's see Let's see if I can get that uh, that uh, explosion, though. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Oh, oh, my God, please. I'm leaning over him. I'm one to four right now. All right. Okay. All right. So I'm, I'm going to grab you, pick you up, and drag <clears throat> you across. You guys make somewhere. your way across. Now, I will tell you, there is, like, if you kind of go around the thickets and come back, it's clear, which is where it sounds like LB is going to go to kind of catch him off guard. To go through the kind of thickets and attack them, it's not really dangerous or anything, but it is very dense. So it will be three quarters cover to get through it because it's so thick there. It'll work both ways. So you attacking yeah. them, but them attacking you will be at three quarters cover. So that's a plus five AC going both ways. Consider that. Or again, you could poise yourself to kind of come around the side and kind of attack. But I know you had talked about distracting them and kind of trying to pincer them. But just consider that. So what's the plan? Right, you guys, you got this. What are you going to do? I could tell them to go that way and be like, oh, I got this really big car and I need your help with it. Right. And then we, we could ambush them. Ah, oh, we could do uh we could do um. I was gonna say an Assassin's Creed, but we wouldn't know that reference. We could wait in the cart, wait till they come near, and then just yank them in, and then. That's a long walk back to the cart. Oh, that's right. We left it back there. Um, from a sound perspective, so far they do down. not seem to know you are here. I say we. All four of us go up and we save the goblin deception for in the cave. How many of them are there, we said? Three. Three. And there are four of three us. Three and a bugbear. Well, no, right no, now. Well, just, outside. just outside. Just outside. Mm. Just three. Could be more inside. Right. Okay. Uh, then then how about the circle? We try, yeah, we try to take him out one at a time. Right. With the most damage. And then. Hopefully we kill them all in one in one go, and they don't make a sound. I agree. All right. Uh, on your mark, get set, go. <laughs> and I draw my rapier. I have distance, so I'll wait until the melees get in range before I'll do anything. All right. Oh, yeah. Well, I could draw them closer so we don't have to worry about that. Oh, that's true. You could be like, hey, come help up. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Pop out. Bring them to us. I'm gonna pop out uh, of this this bramble. Okay. You... I say, hey guys. And they're like, ah, and you'll see there are three goblins. And they're like, what, Dol Dolph? Yeah. Aren't you supposed yeah, to be at the road? Have... Yeah, we got a lot of shit, but I can't carry it all back. What about every? Why, where's everybody else? They're trying to carry it back. I said I got a lot of shit. And you'll see this one, the one goblin looks a little bit, uh, this guy's got all the goblins. The other ones have all been in like leather armor. This guy here, he's got, uh, he's got a chain shirt on. Still shield, seemingly same kind of weaponry, but looks a little like, He's a bad boy goblin. Yeah, he's a little he's more a, a little more well-to-do. 
as it were. Um, and he's just like, did you, did you clear this? Because, like, you know, we clearly, we have important stuff to do. And he kind of, like, you know. Yeah, uh, of course. Okay. Of course. I know. But if we do it really fast, no one will know. And then we don't have to ask for permission. And we don't have to go talk to the boss man. Make me a deception check. I'll give you advantage because oh. you are a goblin currently. It's a good laugh. I am. I'm a gobbo. While this is going on, I'm going <clears throat> to... Oh boy! Finish the end of that flask. Okay. I draw um, my longbow as well, just to be ready. Okay. Oh shit! Oh shit! Damn! Oh, all right. Shit. I'm so deceptive. And they're like, um, and he's just like, <laughs> hashtag gatekeep girl buzz. <laughs> Gaslight. <laughs> and he's just like, all right, fine, we'll help you. Uh, and then they kind of like put down what they're doing, and they kind of start making their way over to follow you. You said they're mm -hmm. making their way downtown. Nope, I didn't say <laughs> it. I didn't say it. <laughs> normal speed. Uh, so you guys, they kind of, you're kind of luring them around the corner where everybody's kind of waiting in check. Is that the plan, LB? Within yeah. melee range. Okay. Yeah, I'll so, pull them through the bramble and then have them get. Okay, the so they make their way through. They're following you. Uh, how much stuff are we talking about here, Dal? That uh, you need three more people, and four is not enough to get. Chests as big as is as big as me. There's like six of them. Oh wow! It was like some sort of like I don't know caravan of royals or something. Oh wow! All right. Well, and then they keep going through, and then they kind of make their way out of the brush where you guys all wait in ambush, and we'll go ahead and I guess roll initiative. Surprise round. Surprise round. Right? They will be surprised. Yes. We love that for us. Uh huh. Twelve. Shit. Seven. Twenty-three. Here's hoping they roll low. Mm -hmm. But also, they're far enough away where they might not make too much sound. Mm -hmm. That LB? is the hope. Seven. Seven. There it hey, is. Seems easy. Okay, start. Look at this. We're gonna... I did it. Bishop, you're up first. All right, very well. In that case, I will uh, sneak up behind our chainmail friend. Or whatever, and I will attempt to stab him with my rapier. Okay. Or whatever. Well, he's there. I know. I just look. Your indifference to murdering a goblin is. Is it murder with a goblin? <clears throat> I would posit no. All right. All right. Uh, do I have an advantage on this? Because From you want it. I, 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 <laughs> oh, because I, you're because hidden. I'm unseen. Uh, I thought. I, it's fine if I don't. Sure, sure, Jake. I'll give you advantage on this. All right, great. He's hey, being so merciful. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, and he's going to kill me in one hit later. All right. Uh, I'm going to take that one point in Gloomstalker that I don't have yet, and uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> can I preemptively? <laughs> <laughs> um, so that is a 24 on the roll. That will hit. All right, very well. And there we go. Rolling on the board for eight damage. Eight damage. All right. That is, he takes eight damage. He's like, ah! Check me. And I think I killed him. You didn't. Ah, then I dance back a couple steps. Okay. Uh, next up is Bronson. There are these three goblins. One has been wearing the chain shirt has been poked with a rapier. Inspired by the tales of Brosian, yep. I uh Yep. I look over at Sinneth and I go, where did they see my And that will be my word of radiance. Oh boy. Alright. What are they gonna make? Con saves? DC fourteen. Okay. On the uh Ying Yang twins. Okay, gotcha. Let's get this. Let's get them. Let's pull them up here. Sorry. Single single tier. As I'm just <laughs> They both you wish they... why you twerk. Uh. They fail. They both fail. <laughs> How much damage? All right. Five points of damage each? Yeah. God. Still alive. 
Word of Radiance. Huge improvement from Sacred Flame. Yeah, well, if you're close, that's the trick. It's, yeah, Sacred Sacred Flame is for like, I smell that little shit somewhere. Uh, it's going to skip over the surprised uh, goblin boss here and go to Seneth. Um, right. I, th I think I'm kind of behind everybody. Um, but I'm going to use, uh, uh, Leyland's shoulder to kind of brace my staff. Okay. Uh, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. The Fire. Phoenix formation. <laughs> I, I hop on your back. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Uh, and I'm going to firebolt him. All right. Let's see it. Uh, does a dirty 20 hit? A dirty 20 does hit. <laughs> you were going for the big guy or one of the little ones? Uh, I want to get one of the little ones out of the way. Okay, well, uh, we've... Four fire damage. All right, well, that will, in fact, get one of them out of the way. And let me see about my... Let's do it. Come on. This would be perfect. I'm one to five. All right, here we go. Oh. I love it. All right. Uh, anything Danger. else for Seneth? Uh, negatory. I've burnt all my spell slots. Yes, you have. Yeah. All right, uh, I don't then... I a fucking thing, chat. So it is your call. You're up next. We have the goblin boss and one of the regular goblins here um i'm gonna shank the goblin boss with a dagger all right let's see it ultimate betrayal yeah, yeah prison rules let's go oh. yeah. <laughs> so it's not even a it doesn't even qualify for a dagger 13. it's a dirk it's he just, just even though he is uh surprised he uh, uh ah oh gosh i'm so sorry i got distracted <laughs> Yeah, uh, it doesn't... Friendly uh, fire! Uh, then it'll skip our surprise ah! goblins and be back to Bishop. Ah, I thought I had you handily, but perhaps this one. And then I attempt another rapier uh, forward thrust. That is a uh, 17. A 17 would hit, and he says, Yeah, well, I'll show you. And he grabs the other goblin and puts it in front, and you stab him instead. Ah, yes. Oh, the castle. oh hang on. Classic. Ooh, hold, Ooh. hold on. Ooh, uh, I, love, I, lo I love to think that Bishop has presumptuous, or like just uh, very pompous names for his strikes. <laughs> uh, the, the, t uh, the Wilted Rose strikes at midnight. Ah, uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not going to do it, although I think it would be funny if I did. Okay, because the, it. so let me read you the ability. Goblin bosses have a reactionary ability called redirect attack. Mm -hmm. And it says when a creature the goblin can see targets it with an attack, the goblin chooses another goblin within five feet. Oh, no. LB well, is another goblin within five feet. That seems... Well, arguably, though, they're not a goblin. They're a changeling disguised as a goblin. No, I, I would no, definitely I... flip a coin on that one. Yeah, no, I'm okay with this. Yeah. If that's what's going to happen. Well, I rolled my damage already. It's nine. <laughs> so he's, you're going to take nine points of damage, LB. I could. I could. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with it because it's technically a humanoid. Goblin is just a subtype. Yeah. So I... And he's like, fuck you, doll. He <laughs> just moves ah! him. <laughs> and did you get... <laughs> <laughs> Stab for nine points of damage. <laughs> Dull. That was that was not the play. <laughs> I didn't do it on purpose. Uh, bro, uh, <laughs> starts crying. Uh, it's your turn. Oh, wait, wait. As a bonus action, I will use uh, three points of or four points of my lay on hands to heal Dull. I, I am so sorry. All right. Uh, then <laughs> it's okay. Bronson, it's your turn. <laughs> you silly little goblin. Looking, uh, oh, you you already uh, you already did lay on hands, right? Yeah, I, I used four of my five. <clears throat> shaking, uh, shaking my head. Can I roll a perception check to see how uh, with the with the state of the chain? Chain shirt goblin is. I'll let you make a medicine check. Ooh. Medicine check, got it. I feel like that fits. Eighteen. Uh, he's seemingly pretty good. Like if we were in fourth edition terms, not even bloodied. You coward, you little shit! And I'm gonna, I'm going to put my warhammer on my side, and I'm gonna go in for a strangle on him Ooh, and okay. cast it inflict wounds 
Oh, damn. All right, shit. All right, give me that attack roll. 22. That hits. Roll that damage. 14 points of necrotic. Unlike uh, Jake, uh, this guy only had 13 health. So uh, describe to us what this inflict wounds looks like. I'm going to find each and every one of you little shits inside this cave, and I'm going to pop their heads just like you as it's flowing this black necrotic energy through the veins inside of its neck. Oh. And you got to remember the name as a lion. As I just ease him down. Yeah, uh, and that happens. Uh, it was his turn next, and he's gone. So, Seneth, there is one goblin left with two HP. What there's a little part of there's a little part of Seneth that's just monologuing. It's like, are we the bad guys? Are we? Are we? Are we evil? As uh, as I, as I look at this creature that I'm about to char to a crisp, and my my moral compass is very much conflicted. Uh, we're gonna do another firebolt. Okay. This is a 20. Come on, three damage. 23 with a. There we go. Eight fire. Yes! Damage. All right. He falls Almost summarily. Right. Let's see what happens about a surge, though. It's a surge. <laughs> is it? It's a surge. Yeah, let's go. Wild magic surge. We got to get a. We got to get a, like a graphic for that to pop up on the screen. Wait, before uh, he surges, how far away is he? No, no. Everybody's right next to each other. We know this. That's fair. Mm -hmm. I was just checking. What is a oh, 39? Oh, 39 points of fire damage. What is it? Uh, it doesn't... Okay, it doesn't say it's a bad thing. You summon forth a fire elemental controlled by the DM. <laughs> okay. Interesting. It doesn't say it's an enemy. Okay, that's all it says, right? That's all it says. Interesting. Ah, fun. Fun. Let's pull up fire elemental stats real quick. Sure. I speak primordial. Okay. All right. I ignore fire damage How resistance. On earth. I I convinced myself <clears throat> that I know. Like the with Shantae, the lay of the land, and have been able to interact with the different elements of nature in this area. So you guys see, uh, let's so how do how let's describe. So the firebolt goes off, poof, hits the goblin. Goblin gets singed to death. How do you envision in your mind? that this this surge happens what does it look like how's it happen i think i i firebolt this goblin um this this firebolt erupts he's immolated he's charred but still continuously burning as he begins to expand and grow as the elemental essentially bursts forth from the goblin body, mm. um, using it as a conduit to to manifest in this plane. All right, you guys see. I don't want him to look like the traditional elemental because I feel like at this point, make him a goblin elemental because he uh, like just so bursts from the goblin's body. Let me. This is what this is what popped into my head because you're level one and an elemental is a challenge rating five. So if you're gonna fight it, you're all probably gonna die. Um, but do you guys? So how many of you guys are familiar with or played like Kirby Superstar or any of the old like Kirby SNES games and stuff? Right. Yeah. You guys remember Burn and Leo, the fire little dude with the big yeah. fire, fire hair? That's what this elemental is gonna look like. Oh. I'm done with that. That's Fucking cool. little blue dude with like the big fire hair and the big like jewel in the middle of his head, the little Kirby style feet. Um, so that's what he looks like, and he just kind of is like very like looking around, confused at the situation here. Uh, on speaks only Ignan, or and primordial counts for Ignan. Um, and then just kind of like surveying and kind of locks eyes with uh Seneth who's like 
smoke is kind of just like dissipating from the end of the staff and then just starts speaking in a language that I don't think anybody except for Bronson understands, yeah? Right? Oh. You guys speak yeah, primordial I, I, or ignan? I don't. No, no. I put my hands up. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> hey, uh, friend. Uh and he says you hear him in uh primordial and is like why why have you summoned me and he's he's directing this all at Seneth, and it's just for the rest of you it's just like it sounds more like like a fireplace like popping crackling logs and roaring flames and none of it actually sounds like words no. but again you bronson can hear like why have you summoned me uh, right. Um, so I've made a mistake, everybody. I don't know what this creature is saying, but it hasn't attacked us, which is good. Um, does anybody speak fireplace? <laughs> <laughs> My friend. Mm. There's been a disturbance in the plains. Mm -hmm. These goblins look to upset the balance in the valley. Mm -hmm. Please, if you could help us in dispensing of them, we have fields that need to be ignited. Mm -hmm. Let our friend help guide you. They are not what they appear. They are of your kind. And I'm going to point over to Dalt. Mm. Oh, okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> go ahead. Kill Dalt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I know. I say to him? <laughs> so uh, go ahead and make me. Um, I don't know. Would you? You could. I, I would allow you to argue religion check for this persuasion because i don't feel like anything from bronson's perspective i don't think any of this is a lie i feel like this is all he believes everything that he says is truthful here so it's not deception oh yeah i will throw on my gizzy guidance sure 11 okay okay Can I give him the help action? Seeing as I summoned this thing? If you could speak the language, I would say yes. But it's hard to help somebody when, you know, they're talking. I like what are he's trying to tell you that it's okay. You know, it's I don't feel like it's gonna work out okay for you not know, to fair. understand what he's saying. Um, if you hate me, just say so, Ted. <laughs> um, oh, hold on. Hold on. So uh, its eyes will shift and the intention will shift from Seneth to you, Bronson. And uh, it, it kind of like there's a little bit of like a inquisitive kind of look. It's there's no mouth where like the voice is coming from somewhere. Um, and it looks you see its eyes track over to Dalt soot over here. And it says, what, what do you mean? They're one of my kind. Rooted a flame. And it will slowly kind of like do its little Kirby walk. You know what I'm talking about? Where it kind of waddles along and it moves over towards, and you can feel the heat just radiating off of this creature as it makes its way over to, um, Dalt soot over here and uh, it just kind of like stares at you and you can just feel this kind of just waves of heat just sort of roiling off of it and you guys see that as this fire gets closer 
Um, and uh, Jonathan, your character will recognize this. As fire gets close to her, her eyes sort of dilate as they get, like, she is, like, piercing into the flames. And it, it, it seems hmm. um, to take, uh, to sort of take some sort of interest in you, uh, this sort of very clear sort of kinship here. Um, and then it turns back to, to you, Bronson, and it says, uh, what would you have me do? These little fuckers up inside this cave. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> big thumbs up. Just to myself, I'm I'm going trying to make fire noises. And... <laughs> 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 um. I'm about 60 feet away at this point. Like, yeah. Yes. Um, and you'll see it will like, it'll kind of like wander over um, towards the cave entrance. And you'll see it kind of, let's just take a look at firemen. It's real quick. Did you uh, tell them that there's people in there we're trying to save? Yeah, Oops. There Oh, dear. <laughs> and six level fireball directly <laughs> down. I assume they were dead. <laughs> you you see it kind of like it kind of there's like a found crack. a way to cast fireball at level one. Let's there's go. there's like a crack in the rocks, and you see it kind of like turn into fire, and then like into like a crack in the fire, and then like you guys just you don't hear anything for a minute it gets real quiet and then you hear just like ah! like wilhelm screams from inside and just like uh. you hear uh wolves kind of like Arr! like there's wolves howling inside and then you just hear like a commotion you hear like a giant like wave of water like a big like tidal wave just comes crashing down this stream and just like washing, there is broken bits of bridges. There are some goblins amidst it being just washed out and down. Um, and then like... Oh my god, you guys, we have to save them! <laughs> <laughs> Who? The... Uh, all right. Our friends! What? Oh, well, all right. No, uh, and then like... At, and you just hear... <laughs> 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 Big all sorts of fires and explosions and things. Um, and then it, it just you just see like a little torrent of fire come swirling out uh, and land kind of next to where it went in. And it just kind of Kirby slow walks back over towards you. Um, right. Bronson, ask him if if. They have XP share on. Ah. Because... <laughs> <laughs> uh, and He's... gracious uh. DM, is this kind of like a wizard rewriting a spell? I feel like that Soot may you know, make a connection with our new friend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I'll say that this creature will then move over. It'll move to kind of you, Soot. And it's got of it's got these weird, it's got these little, you know, the little Kirby hands, you know. Um, but they also seem to carry like flaming sort of like daggers in their little Kirby hands. Mm -hmm. And it will kind of like reach up and it'll just kind of like touch like your little goblin forehead. And there'll be yeah. like a little like singy, like yeah. kind of mark on your forehead. And then um it will wink one of its little burning Leo eyes and it'll walk back over to you, Bronson, and it'll say, it is done. And then it just is gone. Um, so I, I sneak into the cave. Uh, by the way, yeah, LB, go save uh, LB, you will, you have been granted a, a, a little boon from this guy that when you kill creatures with fire, 
a noticeably large amount of them turns into high quality biochar, which makes for excellent soil. Oh, okay. So you are now able to sort of turn these people into much more useful, almost fertilizer, fertilizer. when you burn them, which is right up Bronson's alley, which is funny because it all kind of worked out that way. Man, we are um, changing the agricultural industry <laughs> one kill at a time. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you sneak in <laughs> to the hideout. You don't here. know what the hell nitrogen is. <laughs> but right? Uh, we're spitting in pots brewing over here, but by God, crop rotation, field controlled burns, got this shit down. Incredible. So normally, this would be really dark in here. Mm -hmm. Everything is just shades of oranges and yellows from all of the things that are burning. Uh-huh. In here. Uh, so when you, you walk, in, are you guys? Go if you guys are all walking in, uh, immediately to your right, you can see what was a kennel, um, and you can see four dead goblins just scorched on the ground. Um, you can see um, there is. Uh, one uh wolf that it like there were other like other boxes and things that was chained up that is like managed to get behind like some rocks and it seems to be okay the chain is obviously hot uh there's like a fissure that leads up and there you can go or there's a path that you can continue to go up around following the river mm -hmm. well um, we'll I let this wolf go at the end of this i think <gasps> we could befriend yeah. it it could replace oh. it could replace Dolt. <laughs> what? We should name it Dolt. In his honor. <gasps> Look at that. We have a Dolt again. I am still Dolt. Wait, wait, not a real Dolt, not not you, suit. Okay. <clears throat> I yeah, no. I continue up the path, I suppose. <laughs> All right. So yeah. if you continue around the corner, you can see remnants of what was a bridge up above is gone, uh, and you can make your kind of. Way around the corner. Get non union um, goblet construction. Um, let's see. You can see there is a, a set of like pools there. And you can figure out with the displacement of the rocks that were here uh, that they had built up this as like a defense mechanism that if people were in and they wanted to get them out quickly, they could remove the rocks and cause a torrent. They had dammed this up in the process of the commotion. That had been set free, which also washed out the bridge that was there. Over in this area, you can see uh, three more scorched goblin corpses on the ground. Um, I will also say that you saw kind of in the, the torrent of water washing out some goblins, there were some like wolves that were washed out with the, uh, the torrent of water. Mm -hmm. If you go up the stairs from those twin pools of water uh which also seems to be correlated to like upwards from where you first came in with that fissure there is uh just a totally you smell the smell of burnt hair of this got this bugbear corpse mm. that's here as well as uh two other goblins um and there's also a wolf there as well that unfortunately did not seem to make it what's the uh, uh what's me and the What's up? What's what's the loot situation looking like there? Yeah, we're getting there. Um, the receipt of all the positives that are on this so far, the receipt is coming. So there were yeah. what looked to be a whole bunch of sacks and crates and all sorts of things that you can still see amongst everything that's on fire. What looks to be the symbol of... Uh, some sort of shield with like a lion head on it, which I guess Bronson would probably know is the Lion Shield Coster, which is a merchant company uh, in Fandolin. Um, it looks like there was a whole bunch of supplies here that probably could have been returned for a decent reward that have just been burnt. They're just destroyed and exploded. I'll be honest, the goblins would have turned that thing into a soup kitchen. So if you think anything would have been unused in there, you got another thing coming. Um, Sorry, are, yeah. you, are you against feeding people in need? No, I'm just saying that that goblin probably put it there before. Uh, 
Wouldn't give that to anybody. Got it. Yeah. Uh, there is a chest that is scorched, but it does seem to be primarily intact. Um, and it is closed currently. Are there any non-goblinoid type bodies around? There is still the other side of the bridge mm -hmm. that was gone, so you haven't gone over that way. Mm. Let us head across there, and we'll circle back for this chest, and then the wolf on the way out. Right. Chest's not going anywhere, so... All right, you so... See, oh, I Lord lived like a bitch, and he minute. died like a bitch. <laughs> what was that, Jake? I didn't hear you. <laughs> Oh, I stab it once to see if it's a mimic. Uh, the chest is not a mimic. It, ah, you, you stab the chest. Yeah. All, right. All right. So now you have a 10-foot gap to cross where that bridge was. Mm -hmm. so That's all right. I got it, guys. Uh, I missed you step to the other side. Fair. <laughs> You're over there. this rope. I look up over at Bishop. Have you ever actually seen a mimic before? Or do you just do that on every chest? Every chest, yeah. Some doors, too, if I remember. <laughs> Foil hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's there. It's who, there. Believes, who believes in mimics? <laughs> Actually, one, one, of, one of my aunts, um, she was taken by a mimic. It was a potion uh, mimic, right? Just burrowed itself Jeez. straight into her gullet. At yeah. least that's what, <laughs> that's what my dad says, so. Yeah. Great grandpa <laughs> Bishop went out for smokes, never came back, <laughs> must have been a mimic. Um, hey, what are you going to do? So you guys, I'll say with the rope and everything, you're able to kind of set yourself up into a place where you're easily able to cross. You follow around this sort of curved hallway, um, and you see uh, it kind of opens up into a larger sort of two-story kind of area. And you pass uh, one Scorched Goblin on the way. And you make your way into what looks kind of like the main sort of like sleeping den area, right? Mm -hmm. um, you see seven goblins. Two of them wearing chain shirts. Five of the other kind of other ones all scorched uh, and uh, no longer alive. Mm -hmm. um, you can see... Uh, one of you can see having uh fallen seemingly from the upper tier is a human who fell down uh hit the ground uh you're not sure if the falling damage was enough to take him out or not um but he is yeah he's also scorched unfortunately uh he looks like this looks sildar hallwinter got art finally oh. hey well, um, he's he's scorched. He's got maybe some broken bones. He's wearing uh, chainmail for those of you who might be interested in that. He's got a long sword and a heavy crossbow, slightly scorched nearby. Um, along goes all of the storyline stuff that would have came with him to be able to tell you stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, there is stuff that could possibly be looted from this area if you check on one of the. Uh, the goblin bosses has a pouch with 21 copper pieces. Oh, wow. The other one wow. has three agates worth 10 gold pieces each and a potion of healing. Hey, oh, yo. Wow. Um, yeah, and we'll say that you can just kind of remember that the description you heard of Sildar Hallwinter minus the scorches. That's oh. this. That's this guy. However... No dwarf present amongst the bodies. Hmm. Silver lining on I this. Suppose. Uh, does anybody have a thing where we could <sighs> hold on? And uh, Soot goes from transforms herself from being a goblin to going back to looking like she did before. Mm -hmm. Uh, and her clothes are just tight now. <laughs> I was gonna say I'm I'm already holding your clothes out of my bag. Uh, it's That's fine. I'll just doing. I'll just change when we get back. This is just it's a little stretch to it, so um yeah. Um does anybody have a way that we could can, can we take him back with us or You can we could bury him outside. do we know well, anything about this Sildar Hall where is this fellow from? Does anyone know? 
well, he works with Gundren, and Gundren might have the the coin to bring him back. Right. Uh, if you look at his scorched chest, you'll see that um, there's the crown sort of logo on it, which you guys would all know uh, is the Lord's Alliance mm-hmm. sort of um, symbol. Uh, which is kind of, again, allied political powers on the Sword Coast. Uh, Concerned with mutual security and prosperity. They ensure the safety of cities and other settlements of Faerun by proactively handling violent threats, and Order members work to bring honor and glory to their leaders and their homelands. Or if they would. They weren't weren't alive. Uh, Maybe the fall killed him first, you don't know. Yeah, well... We are sorry, my dear man. That was on a series of unfortunate events, to mm. be sure. Um, Looks like a self-inflicted wound. <laughs> okay. Um. Um, I will say, I'll, I'll give a shred. Uh, oh, you know what? Actually, uh, nope. Never mind. I lied. Mm. I thought it was a thing, but it's not him. Somebody else has it. So. Oh, never mind. Right. Um, yeah, if, if we can either bring him back with or have somebody get him so that he can go with his next of kin and be buried properly? I, I think we should bring him. Yeah. Uh, Bronson, you've got the strength to maybe... Can't we, could we wrap him in like a... I'll take care of it. All right. Um, hmm. Well, let's uh, lose Nat everything 20 else on, on the here. athletics check there yeah you got it <laughs> Love that. Uh, you guys make your way back over to where that chest was I assume mm-hmm. yeah. opening that chest it has 1700 copper pieces oh, holy that. shit what a big pile of copper pieces uh, I'm going to leave it on you guys to figure out how you do your loot and Come. divvy it up uh, 150 silver pieces 2 potions of healing and a jade statuette of a frog with tiny golden orbs for eyes that's worth 40 gold pieces. Hey, yo. Well. Uh, and, and, mm. and I would like Jake, Robert, and Jonathan to roll me a percentile die. Why do you hate me? No, no, you're good. LB, you got it from the fire guy. I gave you a trinket from him, okay. so relax. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the fuck, bro. What the fuck, man? Twenty six. Ooh. Okay, hang on. I heard a lot of numbers at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So, Robert, what'd you get? Twenty six. Robert, your trick. Good number. Good number, Steve. Um. Okay. Uh, Robert, you got a mask that covers the mouth and nose, that is held on the face by a loop over each ear. Grants Constitution saving throw to resist inhaled poisons and diseases. <laughs> Well, that's good. For I don't know if he'll ever wear it, but, you know, he, he's got it. He's thinking about it. <laughs> Protect yourself from some of the horrific smell, perhaps. Right. Uh, when you're burning fields. Mm, more like a nice toy for my niece and nephews. Just wears it on his one ear. Doesn't actually use it, you know? Uh, um, I, I, I turn it, uh, I, I put it on, and I immediately start uh, uh, dancing like the Jabberwockies. <laughs> And I, I can't stop pop locking. <laughs> uh, God, he, he's been possessed. Get him. Oh, you really seem to like that. Um, and what did you I get? Turn it sideways. Uh, and I... 41. Yeah, Roy, he's doing this thing called vibing. <laughs> All right, Jonathan, in a That's good. in a very Senneth way, you have oh, no. uh, socks of new feel. Kind of At any you. point while wearing these socks, you can use a bonus action to refresh them. It immediately feels like you put on a fresh pair of warm socks. Actually, you know what? No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm cool. I'm good with this. You got the Bass Pro <laughs> Lifetime socks. <laughs> and uh, Jake, what did you roll? I rolled a uh, 42. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Jake, you have the universal trinket. Any gold or any other type of currency in your possession transforms into bishop bucks while in your possession. If it leaves, it turns back into the original form of currency after three seconds. But on you, all gold is now officially bishop bucks. 
I have a weird condition. Uh, well, it's best for me to carry the money as it is significantly lighter as a fiat currency than it is as actual bullion. I thought we weren't used to <coughs> on the coins. We're not. I, oh, no, but. Thank God. Yeah, that would take forever, so. Uh, if it, um, we'll get a couple of BBs for everyone. That's what I call Bishop <laughs> If you want to, I'll give you a different one if you want, Jake. That's oh, no, the stupid that's one we fine. came up with. Yeah. You know what, Ted? I'll, I'll keep that on you to remember that. That's all. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are going to be like, what the hell is this shit? And you're like, no, look again. <laughs> and they're like, oh, all right, never mind. We're good. Well, um, everything's good. It, it, it lightens my heart slightly after this horrific firestorm. <laughs> which, <laughs> between the three of you, you seem to have caused. I, I don't think I did anything. I just... He came, just, and, he came and gave you a graceful goodbye afterward. He did, but I didn't know that we were like that, like friends. But maybe it's because I, I'm... <laughs> maybe it's because I'm friends with uh, Seneth that they... Do you get... So you think I'm the friend too? You guys free the wolf, I assume, on your way out? Yeah. It yeah. is just... It is a scared wolf, oh, currently. I think. Can I talk to it? Do you have spell slots left? I, I didn't use any spells. Oh, you're right, you didn't. Yeah. What I was battle saving them for the big fight. <laughs> yeah, right, that's true. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, see if uh, he perhaps knows where Gundren Rockseeker is. Yeah, uh, I will, yeah, I will cast uh, uh, Speak with Animals. Okay. Um, and it's just like, <sighs> what? <sighs> so much fire. Okay. We're not gonna hurt you. That was really scary. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so much fire, so much heat. Yeah, you don't. Have Everyone's to stay dead. Anymore. Yeah, you don't have to be chained anymore. I, I'm so sorry about your friends. Um, do, do you know? Uh, you were held here by the goblins, the, the gray ones, the dark gray ones. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and then mm. the big hairy one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was you saw? Do you know what a human is? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Kind of like you. Did you see? Kind of like me, yeah. Well, yeah, like me. I'm, I'm a human. Um, do you, um, was there anyone else here besides that human and, and the gray ones and the big hairy one? Um, hmm. Uh, th there was a, there's a weird, weird goblin with a long head. And he left. Oh, like, did he have horns? No, his head was just real long. Long head. Okay. It's a xenomorph. Uh, yeah. Um... Don't tempt me. <laughs> oh, oh God. Dan Aykroyd's head. crystal skull is in here. Uh, yeah, right. It's um, weird, okay. Seneth. You see this strange egg shape next to you, and for some stupid ass reason, you feel like you should you put your, your face right over front of it. It's crazy. Without fail, everybody's got to look in it. I don't know why. Oh, <laughs> no. Anyways. Um, so many jokes. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, okay. Yeah, well, uh, long, long, long. Now. Okay. Well, did he smell weird or anything like that? He was weird. He, everything felt weird. I didn't like him. Okay. Yeah. Was he like like? Did he, he, did he, he smell? I don't know. It was. It was so weird. His head was so long. So long, yeah. But he was like on two legs, not four. Yeah, 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 two legs. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I appreciate all your help. Um, I'm so sorry. I, I hope that are you okay to go off by your own, or do you want to hang out with us? And he's like, yep, and he runs away. Okay, bye. <laughs> and he just pounds, bounds away. Yes, wolves are notoriously known for roughing when they run. Yep. Yeah. You don't know what wolves are like on the Sword Coast, Jonathan. You don't know. <laughs> You're right. And Cena definitely doesn't know, so... <laughs> That's also fair. Well... Uh, go ahead. We, we did it. So you guys will make your way out of the cave, I assume, yeah? yeah. Uh, and as you make your way out of the cave in a swirl of fire... Uh oh Your friend reappears. Oh! Uh, <laughs> Our little Kirby friend? Your little Kirby friend. And he goes, hey. <laughs> he goes over towards um uh soot and uh he starts 
uh, talking to you. And for some reason, now you can understand what he's saying, mm -hmm. speaking yeah. in this weird, fiery way. And he says, I don't know what it is, but I like you. You guys notice a visible shift in her demeanor as she sort of looks at it and in common, uh, she says, I like you too. What are you? And Why he's are you back. And he says, I. And he kind of like, like side eyes <laughs> Seneth and just looks back to you and says, I don't really know about him, but I feel like you and I. I don't know. I just I like the vibes that you're giving off. So mm -hmm. I, I feel like if the opportunity presents itself in the future and you're need assistance, I'd be willing to come back and help you out. It would be my genuine honor to have your flames in my hand. And then he just kind of, there's, there's no mouth, but there, if there was a smirk, there would be a smirk. Mm -hmm. um, and then he will just kind of <laughs> away and everybody will level up to level two. Yeah. All right. Uh, Soot kind of blinks and looks at everybody. That was fun. Well done. Well done. That was easily the most horrifying thing I've ever experienced in my entire life. Which part? The cave, <laughs> the cave part, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Like a bunch of rats. Yeah, and yep. and that uh, that nice man <laughs> who, who we had met. I will. Uh, I'll take the time mm. to perform ceremony for oh. the for the fallen. Mm. I have a shovel. Should we dig him a grave here? No, we let's, need to bring him back. Let's bring him back. I'm just gonna take uh kind of for my uh my own knapsack a spare amount of cloth and uh I will take actually a couple of the uh couple of the coins the the bishop bucks. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's what does a bishop tactic. buck look like, by the way, Jake? You get to yeah. decide what it looks like. Oh, wonderful. I think that uh just like my profile picture, it's a side <laughs> profile of Bishop and uh it Behind it, it has a, um, uh, a rapier that goes like through on the top, uh, and then on the back it is a bishop chess piece. Ooh, I like it. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and I wanted to ask you guys this. Um, it's so like so obviously short rest identification of magic items is a, like a thing in base five e. I've never really felt like I loved that because I felt like it made identify like pointless i didn't realize nobody mm -hmm. here has identify but like the concept of like also we talked about risk reward of like messing around with something and not know like kind of getting like there might be something magic about it but i don't know yet kind of play around with it and then as long as the ability for people to identify things is a readily available thing that you can a service you can acquire but i don't know i thought i'd ask see what everybody's thoughts are And I, I don't feel I don't feel strongly one way or the other. I'm just asking. Repeat it. Yeah, repeat it one more time for me. Sure. I was reading through my spells. Yeah. No. So what I'm thinking, what I've been toying around with, mm -hmm. um, is the process. Like normally, the process for Five E is if you have a magic item and you take a short rest, you can identify the magic item over the course of a short mm -hmm. rest. Right. Yeah. And it always felt kind of odd that like a fighter could just pick up. A magic item and be like oh pff, totally no this is an amulet of life i hung out with it for an hour like obviously so again totally fine if we want to stick with the base rules but i was like what are our thoughts about making either that makes the identify spell a useful spell but also as long as it's something that's easily able to like somebody in town for example would be able to cast identify for a small charge to identify magic items for everybody mm -hmm. But also allow Arcana checks to start to kind of like figure out what it is, but then allow you to play around with it and like maybe you yeah. know what it does, maybe you don't. I 
think maybe it would have to do with the the rarity of the item. Like if it's hmm. like a, a healing potion, one would know. What well, that yeah, looks like. I agree yeah. with that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but if it's like as as it gets like more rare, it is exponentially harder to identify what exactly it is. Yeah, you might be able to identify the school of magic that is imbued in it, but mm -hmm. not exactly what the effect is. Yeah. Hmm. I'm just throwing it out there. Like I said, I don't really care one way or the other. Yeah. We're like just we're trying a lot of weird new things. Yeah. We're, do, we're, we're doing exha exhaustion in combat. We found out from chat. You know, who knows? Yeah. Robert, you've been awful smiley and silent over there. I'm very curious what's going through that brain. I'm very interested in how everyone else likes to see magic items. I hate having to wait. <laughs> to identify things at, you know personally mm -hmm. uh but i am very much down trying to figure figure them out like i like that there's when, when we could as long as it's not a blanket like you can't use this yeah yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Can toy, you can have some fun and toy with it i'm all about it. yeah well i you know i mean it, it's just a different way to go about it but i'm fine with just short rest identification anyway i'll you know i'll leave it up to you guys i'm if we have the tool, if we're where we're at, like, okay, we're in a town, we're someplace where we have access to, it's not just short rest to short rest, like, and I mean, like, where we can figure, figure it out. Well, well, I mean, if that's like, obviously, I would put somebody in Fandolin who could identify magic items. Obviously, not Sildar Hallwinter, he ain't doing it. <laughs> um, what if but, we found a revivify? <laughs> yeah, well, so definitely. Yeah, yeah. Minute. And then um, the other side of it would be like, yeah, I mean, scrolls of identify would become a more useful thing that you could just bring with you to identify magic items on the spot kind of a thing. So I don't know. I'm toying around with it. it it's still, we don't have to decide it now. But I don't know. I like the other side of it is I've played so much Baldur's Gate and you just know what stuff is immediately. You know what I mean? Like, it's not even like I have to buy my Diablo identify scrolls and identify what the magic items are all the time, you know? <laughs> there is the advantage of streamlining the experience, right? Especially with a video game. Sure. Know? But if, you know, there's also a certain amount of fun in being like, I'm not sure what this wand does, but I'm going to give her a twirl. <laughs> See what happens, yeah. Turns out, oh, it's a wand of fireball, and you yeah. blew up some of the houses in Fandolin. Whoops. <laughs> I mean, we kind of already have a weird murder hobo -y thing and incineration seems to be a commonplace thing going on here, so who knows? I mean, that fire elemental did 85% of the murdering. That's true. And it's been goblins. It doesn't feel like murder with goblins. <coughs> you mean the man killers? Yeah, exactly. They're, they're, they have a society which has a job, which is trail people killers. I slowly so. start to explain the plot of uh, uh, Ghost in the Darkness. Um, just keep coming out of the cave. Yeah, so um, anyway. I, I looted uh, all of that stuff, by the way, which you mentioned. Okay, so you have all of the things. In fact, yes, I, I wrote down everything I thought was I don't know. Did anybody else write down any loot specifically? I just wrote down all of it, just okay. so in case. So cool. <clears throat> I figured we'd divvy it up accordingly afterwards. Yeah, yeah. great. No, I just wanted to make sure that we have it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you guys? Uh, are you all opposed to taking uh, this chainmail off, uh, off of the Sildar? goblins? No, oh, no off no. of Sildar. Okay. Um. Yeah. Um. I think that might be like a bad thing to do just because right. it's his and we were hoping that they bring him back and it'd be kind of awkward if he came back to life and he's like hey isn't that my i wouldn't be okay with that yeah yeah you know i mean they Very might well. be a family heirloom that he's getting uh, buried in that <clears throat> is why we ask before we do <laughs> right um, so sweet. bishop <laughs> thank you who'd you say your god was again ah yes the uh, it's the uh the red lady Red lady? The red knight? The red knight, indeed. Do you, the do crimson you... lady. <laughs> the red knight. Okay. All right. She sounds cool. Oh, yeah. She's quite wonderful. Oh, she she is, seems uh... flexible. <laughs> well, she... she is, because currently I'm on a fact-finding mission, my good man. 
For what? Well, I'm here. Uh, oh, well. I sit down. I pull out my um, teapot. Your fucking pamphlets. God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> I set up a little a little fire. I'm like, get, anybody get. but Seneth could light this for me. That would be great. <laughs> Seneth, you keep your little fire explosion hands away from me, my good man. And I tell you guys about uh, how I happen to come across this uh, Leon, as they, as they, how, how do you pronounce that name, Bronson? I'm going to be open and honest with you right now. I don't want to invest in your timeshare. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Very well. Uh, yes. Oh, let him cook. Come on. <laughs> no, no. See, I was no, in I Neverwinter, as it were, uh, uh -huh. and uh, I may have been driven out by the local constabulary there. Due to, let us say, uh, my nose being in things which it may not have appropriately have been in. So that other members, to me a lot. yeah. Well, what are you gonna do? Uh, mm -hmm. There was definitely some fraud among, you know, the uh, the city guard, which seemed blatant and obvious. But uh, apparently, um, you can't arrest the city guard uh, with a citizen's arrest. It's Mm -hmm. doesn't work yeah. <laughs> it's a shame but mm -hmm. so anyway my order sent me down to here and first day they were like hey you gotta get out of there or else they're gonna kill you and I said mm. okay and I ran into Bronson Bronson said hey I patrol the paths here between Fandles mm. and uh, Lelion which sounded fine until we got out there it turns out it's a, a year for cicadas which has been <laughs> Awful than atrocious. Supercharged but... year, 17 years in the making. Yeah, well, I believe you. Um, <laughs> but it's been quite bad, and uh, I'm just trying not to get stabbed. And uh, you guys went ahead, and between the three of you and your fire powers, and you're talking to fire things, and having fire things talk to you, uh, I've been... I've been hanging in there. But no, yes, the the... The Red Knight, things are things are great. She's great, and as long as I, I mean, you keep having problems with killing goblins, but I only fought goblins that would have killed me. You or don't think talking... every last one of them would have would have ended you? Oh, they would have happily happily killed me, and so I'm not going to lose a wink of sleep over their corpses. And, you know, Zenith, you could always go home and buy them scrolls, revivify. For, for whom? The, for... the goblins, sure. Why not? Why do I want the goblins alive? I don't know. You seem to have all these questionable opinions about it. Well, not, not about the death of a goblin, just the act that we are committing, whether it's considered a war crime. Whether it was um, a goblin, or whether it was a dog, or whether it was a human, or a dragonborn, or anything, I was just curious about the the methodology. Oh, uh, pragmatism. That little Grebo shot first. <laughs> That's true, I suppose. Um, right. No, I mean, it's fair. They, they, they were going to kill us. Not against that. We did yeah. defend ourselves. Not against that. Uh, they are uh, people killers. Not against that. Um there's no redeeming quality in a goblin. I'm not arguing that. It was just, um, you know, something felt wrong. You know, like clubbing one in the back of the head after offering mercy. Just, you know, that was it. It That's was cool. leading us to a trap. That's the point as well. I believe <laughs> that the ends are justified if the means get you there. Interesting. See, I'm, I'm, I'm not a tactician. I don't fight in wars. I mean, I'm really the first time out adventuring, so I'm learning from you and from example. So if, if that's the way that battle and and fighting goes, then I will take a note from your book and adopt that. Strike first and strike off. Don't worry. All the small flames culminated when you finally released that that one. Right. I should name him. Name. He's mine, first of all. <laughs> um, Sun has found her way over to the stream 
and she has exited the conversation just like wandered off and she just yells from the stream i found a rhyodite she's ah. like picking up rocks from the stream beautiful the tea is also ready and oh. i pour everybody a cup all right i think i think my mage hand is always next to you <sighs> so when you wander off her to hold your rocks for you <laughs> this one might have something good inside of it <laughs> ah a geode perhaps Ooh, a fossil mm. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I... two dollops of honey one cream please you guys carry cream out in the woods i was gonna say like it's powdered it's oh fine. if you don't think i have at least butter Okay, I guess that's that's fair. The butter is just worked cream. There, yeah, people do put butter in their coffee. Don't sure. butter oh, coffee is a real deal. That's Insane true. Insane people, but yeah. they do. She wanders. She wanders back. Look, Flint. <laughs> like holds it up. Beautiful. Uh, and I, I think as the party sits down to have tea and contemplate their questionable decisions thus far, war crimes or not, murder or not. Are they what what's going to happen? We will come back next week as we finish the trip to Fandolin. Um And I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to have no events between here and Fandolin. We're just going to get there. And we'll figure out what happens once we get in Good. Um, <laughs> after the nonsense of, of tonight's game. Um, but you know what? The dice tell a story and Wild Magic Surge did what Wild Magic Surge does. And again, as someone in chat pointed out, it was great that Firebolt is what set it off, not like some super crazy high level spell. Yeah. Um, I can't simple. believe I took Primordial. I'm so happy. It Good would have job. been wild if you didn't, because then it would have just been like the square off with this thing that doesn't speak a language that is clearly powerful. Better. You know what's funny? <clears throat> I almost always take Primordial in any campaign because, like, my GMs are always dicks, and I know they're going to throw something at me. And this time I'm like, you know what? It's not going to come up. I'm not going to need it at all. And lo and fucking <laughs> <cold>. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we'll go around the horn real quick and just give everybody a chance to sign out here, and then we'll uh, we'll see you all next week. So, Robert, where can we find you? What's your deal? Find me at Captain Robert at everything. And uh, I'm going to be doing a giant 12 hour BG3 stream. I normally only do my campaigns as part of my content, uh, but we're doing a uh, little, little fundraiser for all the talent that comes on my channel. So, everything that we're fundraising is for the beginning of the year, the people that dedicate so much time to come over and RP on our channel. So, I'm going to be going from act two all the way through from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. So come hang out and uh, uh, have a little sleepover action on Friday. Very cool. Very nice. nice. All right, LB. Hi, I'm LB Hack'em Up. You can find me at LB Hack'em Up on the Twitter X and all of the other sort of things that you can find me on besides uh, Twitch, which we are uh, Hack Recklessly now. Hack Recklessly on the YouTubes as well. If you want to catch our D&D content, we're starting our... Uh, Playthings of the Gods final season. Uh, they're level 15 characters, and uh, it's going to start in the first weekend in February on Sunday night. So if you want to hang out and do that. Otherwise, we stream horror games on Friday, Thursdays, party games, and, you know, anything we decide to do in between. So that's me. All right, Jonathan. Uh, hola, buenas tardes. I'm Jonathan Perez. I played Zenith. Uh, you know me as Latinos Against Spooky Shit everywhere. Uh, I stream Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I do horror games, spooky games, all sorts of games. Right now we're doing The Quarry, which is a phenomenal little uh, 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 quick time event story narrative game. Super fun. Mondays over on Discord, we do Anime Mondays after stream. And then Saturdays, we do Spooky Saturdays, where we watch some scary shows together. Nice. And right now for the month of January, I'm over at Cujo Plays Games every Saturday as well, where we are playing a mini campaign for Final Fantasy VII to hype up the release of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. So come check us out as we explore Midgar uh, during the backlog of what happens in the original story. So a lot of fun there. Very cool. And Jake? Hey, everybody. Um, I played... Uh... What is his forgot his own character's name. Bishop. I know, yes. Bishop. Johnny, Johnny Chippo. Johnny Chippo. That's my alias. I'm going to take it. Um, no, uh, you guys can uh, listen to 
the podcast that I, that I do with uh, some of the other people who have featured on Nerd Immersion streams and whatnot previously at uh, Legends Rerolled on Spotify and all that stuff. Um, I'm just super glad to be playing D&D, and I'm super happy to have all you guys here and make this a regular thing, and this is phenomenal. I had so much fun. Jake, don't short yourself. You were also Cicada 3. Uh, <laughs> yes, <inside laughs> that's true. That's true. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, again, I'm Ted. This is Nerd Immersion. This is my channel. I uh, do a lot of stuff over on YouTube. A lot of videos. A lot, a lot of videos. Uh, and actually doing a lot more here on Twitch. We stream Baldur's Gate 3 on Monday night, which has been an absolute blast, by the way. If you don't follow... Um, josiah the dungeon dad's second channel he just his editor just released a cut of like the first four or five of our sessions just condensed down and it is hilarious how she edited this all together uh we blew out and ruined one of her earbuds when she was editing it like because of the screams in the game like it it's a lot of fun it's definitely worth it i'll link it somewhere for you guys to check it out it's a lot of fun um and then yeah we'll be back here next wednesday this is going to be an ongoing thing so if you liked what you saw or showed up late and were very confused but confused enough to come back and see what else happens uh we'll be back here wednesday uh and i think lb correct me if i'm wrong sometime in february it looks like we might be starting back up um Not possibly march march oh, sorry so that's march. a future thing there'll be more stuff in the future we'll bring back some old characters from a long time ago but yeah we'll see you guys on next week uh, and again, I'm going to have all sorts of more overlay stuff that I'll work on and finish between now and then. <laughs> so you guys will know what you can donate with channel points and things to help the party out, whether giving them trinkets or chances to get advantage. And, you know, trinkets could be very interesting. Advantage seems like it could be used quite a bit, depending on <laughs> where we're at so far in this game. Um, and you got to respect a group that will use Featherfall on their final spell slot for a petty not falling in the water moment. <laughs> exactly. I will, I will commit to the character. I, I love it. I, I love it. And, you know, we keep coming up with weird homebrew stuff on the fly. Who knows what other stuff I'll come up with next week. I don't know. But we'll see you all then. Until then, I guess. Have a good night, everyone. Bye. Bye.